chance to push yourself to new heights. And you've come to the right place for guidance and motivation. Start Today is today's wellness and fitness community where over 100,000 members share their health journeys. Last year, we gathered members of our Start Today community to walk through Universal Studios. And now we're taking it a step further. In this episode, we'll share healthy and delicious recipes, workouts that you can do at home, and some incredible transformations. Before I began helping people, I went on my own health journey to lose weight and gained an understanding of the importance of working out and eating well. In the Start Today group, I've gotten the chance to know incredible individuals who are on their own wellness journeys, sharing their progress to motivate others. Recently, I spoke with Karen Dallas, whose life has been transformed through thoughtful and committed exercise. Let's take a look. So I would love for us to share with everyone. Um, first of all, can you tell us like how you found the Start Today group? Sure. Um, a few years ago, I went through terrible trauma. I, I lost so many loved ones, including my husband. And so I was really in a dark place. So I spent a couple of years working on healing myself emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Uh, and then earlier this year, I thought now's the time to tackle this uh, physical yeah. element of it. Because I had gained so much weight during this time. And um, so I thought I'm going to start researching uh, groups that I could be a part of. And before I even got started on the research, I received an email from the Today Show. And it said, join our June walking challenge. And I thought, hey, I can walk. Yeah. You know, I can do a walking challenge. So I signed up that day. Uh -huh. It was June 1st. It was June 1st when I got the email. Yep. And so I signed up that day and I got going and um, never looked back. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, all right, so and then can you tell everyone like where you were at then? Because I know, um, I remember like it was hard for you to, to walk like oh. without being in pain, right? Yeah, you know, I knew I could walk. I was, I was ready to go. I was all energized. I got about a block down the street and I thought, oh, Lord help me. I'm not gonna make it. So I had to stop and stretch my back out. My back was hurting so badly. And I thought, if my neighbors see me, they're probably gonna call 911, because I was just a mess. I was a mess. And if this was so odd for me, because I've always been so active, mm -hmm. you know, up until the last few years. And so it was rough, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. I, I went a block, I would stretch, I'd walk another block, I'd stretch. Yeah. And that went on for a couple of weeks. I thought, I'm not giving up. I yeah. am not giving up, I'm, I can do this. Yeah, what made and, you not give up? Like, what what made it like a, a wake up call instead of like you know a reason to keep yourself sidelined? Well, if I don't change, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't. I don't want this to be my life. Yeah, I don't want to be in pain. I'm too young to be in this kind of shape. I want to have a good quality of life, a good retirement. I want to do fun things. By the end of June, no pain. I was walking the full 20 to 30 minutes a day. Okay. So you can do it. You just have to stick with it. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And then give us kind of an overview of like June until now. Like give us, give us your successes. Well, in July, since I was feeling pretty good about myself at that point, that I could actually walk. Right. <laughs> I signed up for one of your uh, sessions, the weight loss group. Uh huh. So that was the first time I actually joined uh, a community uh -huh. of like-minded people when we were in this to lose some weight. Yeah. And that was life-changing for me as well. Yeah. So um, I joined that as a 12-week program, mm -hmm. made it through the 12 weeks, didn't have enough apparently because I signed up a second time. Right, right. And, then, and now we're in it again and I, I'm just really making very positive changes. Yes. I love it. And we'll talk more about those programs in a minute too, because I want people to know, you know, it's it's like you've made so many changes. Like you've you've changed how you view food, you've changed like the emotional eating component of all of this. Um, your mood, your your like energy around right. the exercise and the eating and the taking care of yourself, prioritizing yourself has has really transformed from where you were, you know, prior to six months ago. Um, 
So what can you tell everyone how much weight you've lost and like the different the difference in your energy levels and your outlook? I've lost about 20 pounds uh, uh -huh. since June. Um, well, really since July, June uh -huh. trying to get that walking implemented. I didn't start losing weight until I joined the weight loss group. Yeah. And so I've lost about 20 pounds since July. Uh -huh. uh, building a great foundation. I think the thing is to do something sustainable that you can manage for the rest of your life. Right. I don't want to lose 20 pounds to gain back 20 pounds. Right. You know, I want to maintain this. So I'm building a great foundation. I feel confident that I can continue and this is going to be a lifelong uh, habit for me. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, and what are three tips that you would give someone, um, like they're just starting out or maybe they're like you and they, they were walking, you know, down the block and then already in pain, like what, what tips would you give to them, if any? Oh, I, I could write a book on tips, maybe okay. not, what not to do, but uh, a few things to do is uh, find your community. I think that's one of the most important. Find your uh, team, your cheerleading squad, uh, people that support you. My sister is my biggest cheerleader. Uh, my neighbors, my friends, our community. Yeah. Our community is, oh, I, I'm thankful every day. Yes. Them. They make my, my gratitude journal very oh. awesome. <laughs> um, one of the things you can get wisdom so much just from a t-shirt sometimes. And I have this t-shirt that I wear that says, no one succeeds alone. Oh, and that I love is that. so true. Yeah. Yeah out you can't do this alone mm -hmm. you've got to have a team around you and you've got to have people supporting you so that's one tip I, love uh, it. I, I would say the second tip is something that I learned from you perfection is not sustainable yes let's go for that passing grade that's right you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're going for a C we're just right. looking to pass we do not get bonus points if we get a B or an A plus or extra credit on the A plus you know Yes. I was I always that. an A student, so that took me a minute, but when it clicked, it clicked. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I can do this. I can do a C at least every day. Some days will be an A, some days will be a B, but we're going to yeah. shoot for that C. Yep. And then and some probably, days might be an F, but it'll oh, balance well, out to yeah. a C. Yeah, we try not to talk about those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, some days are an F. <laughs> Some days you just sit around in your pajamas, okay? Right. And that's all right. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I'd probably say my third tip would be, you can do hard things. Mm. You know, don't sell yourself short. Mm. You can do this. Um, life is hard, you know, life sucks sometimes, but then it's great. Yeah. You know, life is also great. So you can do hard things, you can get through this, you can have a better quality of life. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all here for you. We're all mm -hmm. here to support you. Yeah. Re reach out for help. Yep. Go back to tip one. Have your yeah. community. <laughs> Correct. That's right. What a transformation. It was so great to chat with Karen and hear her story. Coming up, we'll be digging deep into meal prep with three easy recipes anyone can make. This is what it looks and feels What's the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. What's the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, 
wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to Start Today. Part of feeling your best is fueling your body with fruits, vegetables, protein, fat, and yes, carbs. To help set us up for success in the kitchen, registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto is here with three simple recipes to make meal prep easier. Hey, Vanessa. Hi, so nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh what gosh. are we making today? Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're making egg cups. Egg Ooh. cups are super yes. easy. They help you with batch cooking and uh -huh. meal prep. Everybody always wants things to be done quickly. Yes. And so today we're going to get it done. I love it. So many of our members ask for quick, you know, grab and go breakfast. Yep. So I love making egg muffins myself. So I'm totally. excited to get started. Yeah. And it's not just a breakfast. It can be lunch and a dinner and a snack. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to start with our inclusions. Okay. Um, we're going to start with some spinach, good source mm -hmm. of fiber, Love it. vitamin K is going to help you. Um, <laughs> we have some cheddar cheese, good source of fat, and then onions is just going to give us a little bit of bite and kick. So okay. I like to mix those together, mix it up, and then okay. you're going to take a quarter cup and just like loosely pack into oh. the muffin tin. Now, can you use different types of cheese, like feta? I yes. love feta. Feta cheese is naturally low fat. It's uh -huh. also helpful for people who are lactose intolerant because it's made from sheep's milk. Okay. Uh, but you never have to go and buy low-fat feta because it's already low-fat. Okay. Which is amazing. That's a great tip. Yes. So okay, so gonna, what do we do next? So you're going to pack that in. Oh, That's I see. We be, put this in, in the bottom. Yes, you put this in oh. the bottom. Yes. It's just a better way to fill it properly right. so you don't over. I've always fill. been filling these wrong. And then it, and then it goes <laughs> up, right? Yes, it does. And <laughs> yeah. I wonder why it's like exploding over the top. Yeah. Okay. So I have eight <laughs> eggs here. I'm going to whisk these till they're pretty smooth. So then we're going to have some salt Every and last. pepper. All right. Backwards and milk, just so okay. we can like fluff that up. Okay, so, great. Can people use almond milk or you know other types of milk if they're lactose intolerant? You can. Okay. The only thing is that the almond milk, if you are picking one that's sweetened yeah. or vanilla, it's going to give it a different flavor. Right. So you're going to want to make sure that you pick one that is unsweetened and original flavor. Original flavor. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. you don't want to change that out. Okay. okay great. So we're just going to start. Pouring. Okay. Just like, so we want to make sure not to overfill. Yeah. So we might have to like go back and forth a little bit. That's another problem I've had making these. I fill yeah. everything up to the yeah. brim. Yeah, and then it just like goes really high. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then you're kind of in a little bit of trouble. But that's okay. So if you had if you had two of these every day, you'd have enough for breakfast for six days, almost Correct. a whole week. Yeah. 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 And these microwave nicely after we bake them. And 30 seconds. Them. Okay. It's like, like very quick. This okay. Is like, you will be very happy. Yes. So now we're going to put these in the oven at 325 for 20 to 25 minutes. And we'll know that they're done when we, you know, feel them being firm. So okay. if you want to just like head over to the oven yeah. and put them in, we can get started. Great. These look so good. Uh, I know. I'm sometimes <laughs> impressed by myself. Yes. Um, so, you know, you let these cool for about okay. five to seven minutes. We don't want to burn the roof of our mouths. Okay. Um, and then we can store them okay. up to five days. Can I try oh, one? Of course. Okay, good. Oh, my God. It tastes better than it looks, yeah. actually. It's super delicious. And wow. This is like the beginning of the batch cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody mm -hmm. thinks like a batch cook and meal prep is just like five containers with the same gross right. salad that you're gonna have to eat every single day. And right. that's not true. It's like having a series of proteins, yes. a series of fruits and vegetables and things that you could just grab very quickly. Yeah. And this is something that obviously you can have for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You can have two of them for breakfast with a side of berries. Okay. You can have it for dinner or lunch with uh -huh. a side salad. Mm -hmm. You can, two or three of them. You can mm -hmm. have one as a snack. Yeah. It's just like super versatile and like easily stored. Yes. So the next thing we're gonna do is shredded chicken. Yes. Okay, so, gotta be honest with you, this, this really grosses me out. I am not a fan of the raw meat. Well. But it's because I don't like watching the transformation from raw to cooked, so I think this is great. I can just leave it in there and, and not think about it. 100%, this <laughs> is for you. So I'm okay. going to give you the Oh, tongs. thank God, okay, I don't have to touch this with my hands. <laughs> yep, All right. so it's okay. two pounds of chicken. Chicken is a great source of protein, and we're gonna use some neutral spices here, so some garlic powder, and some pepper. Mm-hmm and some salt, Okay. and then we are going to add chicken broth. You could also do vegetable broth. Okay. Uh, just don't do water, because then it will have no, no flavor, flavor. Okay. and you will be miserable. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> then you will wonder why you did this. Yeah. And so then we're just gonna put it four hours on high. Good, and once I do this, I do not have to look at it until no. it's done. That's right. So, this is done. Uh-huh. Okay, now Vanessa, I've actually never shredded chicken before. Oh, I'm gonna show you. A lot of our members know I, I like eating healthy, but yeah. I don't enjoy cooking that much. So this is great so far, but how do I shred? Okay, so you're gonna take both okay. of your forks, okay. and you're gonna go 
right here. See the sits. Okay. Opposites, and then All you're right. just going to pull. Okay. So you can just pull it. You can have as little pieces or as big oh. pieces as you'd like. Okay, this is actually working. Yes, it is wow. working. It is. You're a genius. I mean, <laughs> you know, we season this really uh -huh. neutral uh -huh. so that we could repurpose this chicken for later. So okay. I usually have this as my emergency protein in my refrigerator. Yes, great right? idea. And so then you could use it to make tacos, uh -huh. burritos. You could also just like put this on top of a salad later. Yeah, yeah. You could boil some pasta and put that on the side mm -hmm. and then also have some vegetables. So it doesn't need to be this like perfectly plated chicken right, breast, right? right? And yeah. it doesn't and it doesn't have to be made today, mm -hmm. right? You can mm -hmm. just make it and then have it for later. Yeah, and I love this. This is one of those principles of meal prepping. You want to be able to repurpose things. So the fact that we didn't overly season this or, you know, right. do a too elaborate of a recipe That's right. makes it really easy for us to use That's this right. for many different meals. Very easy. Right, so coming up next, you're going to make a sauce. Cilantro avocado sauce. Yum. Mm -hmm. That could go on the chicken. Exactly. See, this is how we meal prep. So I'm going to start with the avocado. Okay. So you're going to do a quarter, mm -hmm. so half of a half. Okay. That looks so nice and fresh. Oh. And this is a healthy fat. Healthy fat, yep. exactly. But you know, the serving size, which I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. is a quarter. Okay. Right? And so, but a whole one, if you, uh -huh. eat, if you eat an entire avocado, it would be 10 grams of fiber. Okay. But it would be really high in saturated fat, so we want to stick to that right. quarter of, right. of it. So okay. then you're going to add the cilantro. Okay. Just whole like this? Whole like that, okay. stems and all. Okay. Ooh, this is easy. I know. I like <laughs> to make things easy. Garlic. Okay. Now, you know, I'm half Italian and we love our garlic, so could I do more than this if I wanted? Yes. Okay. It's just that, you know, everybody right. is particular and they might think this is spicy. Right. I would probably do six cloves. But right, two, right, okay. Two is fine, <laughs> two is fine. <laughs> then we're gonna do a plain Greek yogurt. And so, Ooh. you know, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates uh -huh. help to keep you full. So where are we getting the protein from? We have to get it from the yogurt. Greek yogurt. Exactly. Okay. So that's about 21 grams of protein. Okay. You have the fat from the avocado. Yeah. Some flavor. It's great. So now we're going to add some salt. Okay. Lime juice. Ooh. And a little bit of water, about two thirds of a cup. So I'm just going to smooth this out. I personally like it to be like a little bit chunky. Okay. But, you know, the to each their own. Exactly. <laughs> the preference is yours. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It smells like I'm in a restaurant. I know. This I know. was so easy to make. <laughs> so I have some here okay, for you okay, to taste. Thank you so Please much. Taste. Okay. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. So good. I love this. Yep. You can put that on top mm -hmm. of a green bowl. You mm -hmm. can put that inside of a sandwich, like a you know, a turkey wrap or mm -hmm. something. You I would put it on a salad too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our members talk too about how they have all those staples. Like they have the chicken or they have the ground beef or even even pastas and salads, but they're looking to jazz things up. So this is a great way. This is so flavorful. Totally. It's beautiful. Yeah. I bet the store is great in the fridge too. Five days in the fridge, or you can also just you know, portion it out into Ziploc bags if you want to make a oh. number of them and okay. just, like, date them, and then you can just keep pulling them out. Because that's the other thing. Maybe you're not going to want this every week, right? but it's nice to have it in your arsenal and just yes. know you can put it out and it stores really great and you can put it on anything. Amazing. Thanks, Vanessa. I'm so glad. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Well, coming up next, I'm sharing a few exercises from our January Fitness Challenge. So stay tuned. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. love riding the wave. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. What's the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's a new year and we're focusing on building healthy habits for both our mind and body. I'm going to walk you through a few exercises to strengthen the upper body, lower body, and finally the core. And the best part, you don't need any equipment. We're gonna get started with a modified push-up. This is a push-up on your knees. So lowering down onto the mat, we're gonna line the wrists up with the front of the mat. Then shift your shoulders forward over your wrists and bring the knees back a couple of inches behind the hips. Pull the abs in tight, and then we're gonna lower down, chest towards the floor, elbows out to the sides, and press up. Lower down and press up, good. This is modified because we're on our knees to take pressure off of the wrists and make this a little bit easier. Great job. Now the next move is arm circles. And you might say, gosh, well how can I work my arms if I don't have any weights? Well, let me tell you, if you do this for 60 seconds, forwards and backwards, you are gonna feel the burn. This is something super simple that you can do while you're waiting for something to microwave, while you're stirring something on the stove and waiting for it to boil. You can lift your arms up and start to do arm circles, or you can even do this while you're waiting in line. The next exercise starts with a squat, but we move the squat by turning it into a walking squat. So we're gonna start with the feet as wide as the hips. Pull the abs in, reach the glutes back, coming into that squat. Then we're gonna step to the side and bring the foot into the squat position and lower down. Then we're gonna step to the side, bring the foot to meet it in the squat position and lower down. You can go side to side with this and just make sure you do that squat as you bring the feet back into the squat position. Great job. Next, we're gonna do something similar, but this time with a lunge, but not just any lunge, we're gonna do a half lunge. So we're gonna start with one foot forward and one foot back, feet as wide as the hips. We're gonna bend both knees halfway, so about a 45 degree angle here, as opposed to a full lunge with that 90 degree angle. So this halfway lunge here, and then we're gonna step forward and lower down into that half lunge. And then you can turn around and do this again, walking forward about five times with each leg. So here we go, in that half lunge, and then we step into the half lunge, and we step into the half lunge. Great job. Now, the last exercise we're gonna do is for the core. So we're gonna get down on the ground. Now again, this is a total full body workout without any equipment. So lowering down onto your back, what we're gonna do next is lift the legs up, pull the abs in by taking a deep breath in. Exhale, pull that navel in towards the spine. Now from here, we're gonna curl up and reach towards one foot, lowering the other foot down, and then switch and reach up. Good, switch and reach up, switch and reach up. It's okay to lower the shoulder blades a little bit as you're switching the legs and then you curl up higher to reach towards the toes. If you can't touch the toes and if you're touching the shins, that's okay too. Great job, everyone. I hope you feel stronger with these exercises. Coming up, I'll be answering our viewers' burning questions. Stay with us. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
you get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs>
And today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to show us how to turn an easy sheet pan recipe into the ultimate reboot bowl. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, guys. Lindsay, it's so nice to be here with you. you the too. last time we were together, I think we were having a vegetarian feast oh, in Connecticut, yes. right? We were at the right. tavern. That's, That's right. right. Yes. That's right. So I'm going to show you how to transform the easiest one sheet recipe into an energizing reboot bowl that has literally layers and layers of yummy goodness. But the best part, it is very, very simple to put together. So I'm gonna start with the sheet, rest, the sheet pan recipe. Here I have three heaping cups of broccoli. So the, the, the big uh, theme here is gonna be lots of plants. This is three heaping cups of uh, sweet potato that I cubed, or you can ap absolutely use any kind of acorn or winter squash as well. And now I have more cruciferous vegetables, so loads of fiber, and that is our cauliflorets. Now I have one can of rinsed and drained, and very important, it's padded dry chickpeas because I'm adding in a lot of fiber and some protein now. A little bit of olive oil. I have about two to three tablespoons in here because I want all the seasonings to stick. Now, I like to over season. So I'm going to put in, th uh, this is two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of onion powder. And I had some fresh rosemary in my fridge. So I chopped up and I have about two tablespoons here. But it's eater's choice. You can put in whatever herbs that you want. And you're just going to mix this up mm -hmm. to evenly distribute everything. You pour it onto your sheet pan. I mist it with a little bit of olive oil spray. And then I just put this, actually, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I, I forgot about my salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. But it goes in the oven, set at 425 on the middle rack, just for about 30 to 35 minutes. And I flip it halfway through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you are going to get these gorgeous char marks. Look at this. Oh. This just came out of the oven. Do you, can you see right. this? Let that me say. Nice. So when you're building the yeah. bowl, Joy, what layer goes first? Okay. So now for the fun part. And you are the boss of your bowl because there's so many different directions that you can customize this bowl. So here's my bowl. Mm -hmm. And the first layer is going to be dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So it could be spinach, kale. It could be any lettuce that you want. Oh. The next is going to be a heaping mound of those delicious caramelized, addictive veggies mm. that we roasted. Mm. Then a little bit of fruit. So I'm oh. using a pear because I don't think pear gets enough love, guys. And it actually has a little bit more fiber than apples. Oh, but you can that. also use an apple. Mm -hmm. You could also use pomegranate seeds or um, even uh, dried cranberries right. or cherries. Anything goes. And then the protein is your choice. So wow. I put out a question on Instagram earlier this morning and I asked my followers, what should I put on? Lentils, salmon, black beans, shrimp. I have chicken. I have tofu. I'm going to tell you the tofu came in last place. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and go for the salmon this time. And last but not least, we have this mellow. Her the salmon to put in the leafy bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a mellow but mouth-watering tahini dressing that I'm going to show you how to make because everybody needs this. We're not going to have time We're going to put that. that on the website. We'll put it on the website. But okay, thank you, you so much. It. That looks fantastic. Look, All right. Look at this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a drizzle Beauty. because you got to oh, see this. Drizzle. And for this recipe, <laughs> head to today.com. <laughs> right. to Today, nutritionist Joy Bowers here joining us with a corn chowder and a spiced chai tea. Mm, Good let's morning, start cooking. Joy. Good morning. Oh, my people. Hey, guys. So today is all about warming the bones with okay. healthy foods and beverages. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to make is, like you mentioned, a cozy, creamy corn chowder. And I'm telling you, this is scrumptiously slurpable. Mm. I'm going to take you over to my stove. Okay. So here um, I have what I'm calling my nutrition confetti. All I've done is I sauteed some carrots, celery, and onions. It mm. kind of looks like confetti, doesn't Carrot, it? Celery, onions. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and now we build the soup. It's as easy as that. Because corn is not in season, I'm taking advantage of canned corn actually for a few reasons. One is because I get to use it. You notice I didn't drain it. The juice, I, yeah. I'm using the flavorful broth that normally oh. we just discard. Mm -hmm. I'm putting two cans in there. Then I'm putting in a full um, four cups of either a vegetable broth or a chicken broth. What did you and use there? I would, 
I'm using, uh, this is a chicken broth, and I'm using a reduced sodium because I'm controlling the salt. Okay. So there we have that. And then just a little bit of cayenne because it really does give it a pop of flavor. Okay. And then last, one pound of small red potatoes. I leave the skin on for extra fiber, and um, I cut them up into bite-sized pieces right. because I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to simmer it for about 15 minutes just until those potatoes get fork tender. Okay. I'm going to put this over here, and then the fun begins. I want a lot of body in this soup, so I use an immersion blender, but you can also do this in um, small batches in either a food processor or that, a regular yeah. blender. Okay. And see what I'm doing there? I'm just yeah. blending it so they get a lot of richness and body within that soup. And if anybody doesn't have a blender right. or an immersion blender, you can leave it chunky. It's totally mm. okay. It's so good. now... Yeah, it's really good. You could stop right there, but we're not going to stop. So then to finish it off, more texture, I'm Mm -hmm. adding in drained corn. So this time it's two cans of drained corn. Mm -hmm. Because I saw all these whole corn kernels in there. I was wondering when. Yes. And before I actually pureed the whole thing, Mm -hmm. I like to reserve some of the potatoes, again, for a little bit of texture and Mm -hmm. like surprises as you slurp through. That's really good. Yeah. A dash of salt, and it makes a great big batch. And I like to Very garnish simple. it with this a little really bit terrific. of dill. It's really good, Joy. How about the tea, Joy? Yeah, we'll try that. that. The chai tea. This is fantastic. The chai tea. So here we go. I put mm. four cups of water in here. I love chai because my kitchen smells so unbelievably right now. It really infuses it with such aroma. And in the four cups of water, my combination is some cinnamon sticks, ginger, a little bit of nutmeg, fennel, peppercorns, oh. cloves, and cardamom. Okay. And I give you a recipe for a balanced base, but really you could ramp up any of these spices if you like a stronger flavor. And so as those were um, uh, simmering in here for about 15 minutes, then you put in your tea. So I have four tea bags that I added in. They've been in here for just about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Stick this over here. And now we build it. I add in three to four cups of a milk. Truth be told, I tried this with an almond milk and it came out a little bit too thin. So I'm yeah. using a 2% reduced fat. Okay. And Maybe an oat a milk little bit. I was going to ask you about oat milk. Yeah. Oat milk would be fabulous. And this is a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of honey. And then I'm going to bring mm. you over mm. to my finished product. Come back with me okay. over here. I'm and sure it smells good, here, yeah. You can't I oh, strain it through a colander, <laughs> and here's the cool part. I feel like if you're going to be putting in so much effort, because it's much more involved than just steeping regular tea, mm-hmm. I make a great big batch, and then I stash it in the fridge, and whenever a craving calls, mm-hmm. I just warm it in the microwave, Very and you nice. have about seven cups. All right, Joy. Well, thank you much. We're, we are ready for the weekend. I know. Thank cozy. You. Yummy, yummy, it. yummy. Thank you, Joy. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Joy Bauer is upgrading our lunchtime with two, not one, but two tasty sandwiches that she makes in a skillet. Hey, good morning, Joy. Hey, Hey, Joy. Joy. 
Good morning, guys. I think I'm about to become your new favorite lunch lady because we are seriously <laughs> creating next level sandwiches. And like you said, in the skillet. So the first sandwich is a fun spin on a traditional and beloved PB&J, mm -hmm. but I'm calling this one a grilled PB and fruit. So here I have hearty, seedy, whole grain bread. We're actually making two because I want to show you the versatility of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I just put a tablespoon of peanut butter on all of the slices. So you want this peanut butter going on the bottom slice and the top slice, and then you become the Picasso of your decor, right? So I have all this fruit over here. The cool thing is when you don't use sugary jam and you use the whole fruit, you're getting a lot of texture, you're getting a lot of hardiness, and you're getting the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants that the fruit brings to the table. Um, you could stick with one fruit. A lot of people just like PB and bananas, oh, yeah. or you could yep. do what I've done. And when you see the great over here, I did slice them in half. I just want to show you because mm -hmm. otherwise they would be they a little around. bit too bulky. <laughs> exactly. So then what you do, I'll show you on one. You take your top slice mm -hmm. and you put it over your Sammy and you take olive oil spray and give it a nice liberal spray okay. on both Instead sides. Instead of butter. Instead of butter, exactly. And this goes in the skillet just for one minute on either side. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you can't believe how easy it is. Oh, wow. Jill, I feel like you could do this. <laughs> and Joy, by the way, the production values, camera's moving, you got an overhead camera. It's uh, uh, unbelievable. He's never coming back to the studio that, to bring us any of this food. That Ian oh, Bauer is a superstar husband and photographer. Yeah. <laughs> Now, and I keep saying, like, he needs a, a, a like, a what, what would we call it, a, a COVID Emmy or something like that. He has learned how to do all of this. Well, I'm, for I'm Ian, sending for him sure. that. And I think you need an Emmy, too, because you're actually going to show us how to make a sandwich that I never thought you can make healthier, a Monte Cristo. Mm. Oh, my goodness. This has so many layers of scrumptiousness. So what I'm starting with here, so these this is whole grain bread also, but for mm. this one, because... Yeah, it has a French toast melt in your mouth feel. Mm -hmm. You want a softer bread. So it's a whole grain softer bread. I put mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on one slice and let the layering begin. So we have here, I'm using ham because that's classic, but truth be told, you I don't to love slice ham. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I had some extra here. Now, normally they top the French toast with some powdered sugar. So instead for a little sweet something, I put in a crisp Fuji apple. Mm. Then we have our Swiss cheese on top. Take the second oh, piece of bread, so but because we're melting. making French toast, we have here an egg mixed with a little bit of vanilla extract oh, whoa. and a dash of milk. That looks this amazing. Really? And how long does that go into the, the griddle? Skillet. About four minutes, I'm gonna grab it. About four minutes on each side, and you cannot Whoa. believe Beautiful. this that is just yummy. like a masterpiece. Let me see if I can get a close-up. Yeah, I'm going to grab through the screen, that, Joy. That is fantastic, <laughs> Joy. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And for you these recipes it. and more, head to today.com slash food. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. 
I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is ripping up a barbecue salmon bowl mm. packed with flavor and nutrients. Good morning to you. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. So nice to see you. You too. too. Well, before we dig in here, can you talk about some good superfoods that all of us can incorporate um, into our diets? Definitely. So I put together a list of five superfoods. I mean, these are some of the best of the best foods that everyone should be eating, but I specifically designed this list for women. And the okay. first one is spinach. Spinach is basically nature's multivitamin. When I tell you it has countless, countless vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. But interestingly enough, it has a unique combination of two potent antioxidants called lutein and zeaxanthin that help to promote sharp vision. And also, it's a great source of plant-based iron, which helps us to maintain our energy levels. The next on the list is salmon. I mean, this tops every single list. It has a lot of high-quality protein. It also has all the essential amino acids. So that means it helps us to maintain our muscle mass. And as we get older, it keeps our metabolism revved. But of course, salmon is world famous for its omega-3 fats. And omega-3 fats are super important because first, they tame inflammation in the body. They also support heart health. They help to drive down triglycerides and they manage blood pressure. But they also help to regulate your mood. And one other thing I'm going to say about salmon, I could talk about salmon all day. But we don't, we don't have all day, Joyce. we gotta, <laughs> we got to move on here. So how are we going to start combining all these things? Well, three other foods we have are beans, we have for skin health, our tomatoes, and last but not least, I'm touting almonds. All, almond, all nuts are winners, but almonds have the added bonus of calcium. So okay. I'm going to take all of these foods and we're going to turn it into kind of like a boss lady bowl. This is okay. a barbecue salmon bowl that has everything. Okay. While so you're throwing I this started... all together, Joy, I still want to know what you were going to say about salmon. <laughs> Salmon has vitamin D, and vitamin okay. D helps to keep our immune system strong. There you go. And okay. also helps with bones, healthy bones and teeth. So okay. here we have all of our spinach, and I chopped this spinach up because it works better in the bowl. Okay. And now we take our award-winning salmon. That salmon, and this that salmon is, a little, is delicious. Is it just salt and, and pepper on there? Salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil. That's mm. it. And you mash it right up. It's the easiest thing. And you could do this with leftover salmon as well. So you already know that this bowl is packed with the good stuff. Now I'm adding in my beans. Before, what I was going to say about beans, they have a great combination of plant-based protein and fiber, which steadies your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Now we have our tomatoes. Tomatoes have lycopene and vitamin C, which protects our skin from the sun's harmful rays. This is just some extras because we want to make this bowl extra delicious. We've got some corn, and super healthy. Too. Look at the um, the pop of color from the red onion. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, actually, I'm going to squeeze on a little bit of lime juice. Mm -hmm. And you could add a little bit of cumin or salt and pepper if you want. And here comes the barbecue sauce because this is a Wait, we're barbecue, to have barbecue salmon sauce? bowl. You can. And there's a lot of great brands that are lower in sugar, but you're only using about two to three tablespoons. Okay. And this is instead of dressing. Now, it's almost complete, but there was one last superfood that I touted, and that the was almonds? the almonds. Mm. So I'm going to add in mm. a sprinkle of almonds for some crunch. crunch. And I love, whoops, I love scallions. And guys, this is a sausage. So and that's one serving? It's no. <laughs> one serving. No, no it's it one is. serving. That's one and serving? And it's packed with oh, protein we you were just... and fiber. That's amazing. Yeah. No, guys. I'll wow. fill you up for a I while. Mean, yeah. This is uh, really yeah. good stuff. Joy Bauer is here with two dinner recipes. That, that Joy, they, we're just using one pan, right? One pan. It's Forget officially about all those bowls. cheap. No, sheet pan <laughs> superfood Friday. And again, it is, there's so much to love about these recipes because like you said, Craig, they're easy to make, they're packed with nutrition, and they're totally delicious. And we're starting with what I'm calling a sheet pan harissa salmon with vegetables. And step one is to roast those vegetables. So in the spirit of convenience, I'm using baby carrots. They're already cut and washed for you. And here, 
some cauliflower mm. florets, nice. a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, and a little bit of salt and pepper, and that's it. Now, I'm going to mix this up. I preset the oven for 450. These are hearty vegetables, and I'm going to lay them out on my baking sheet in a single file. And Joy, how do you make sure you don't burn the vegetables when you're roasting at such high heat? So I definitely keep a watch on them, but for these, I put them in for about 25 minutes, and I like to make sure that the carrots are fork tender. Again, mm -hmm. they're hearty, so they take a little bit of a little bit in that oven on high mm -hmm. heat, and I like that cauliflower to get oh, charred oh, and slightly so burnt good. on top. It's like melt in your mm -hmm. mouth. It makes you scream for another bite. Now, <laughs> while these are in the oven, we're going to do the magic sauce. So what happens here is in a bowl, I mix... Harissa is a chili paste. It's from, it's Middle Eastern and it's North African. And it has olive oil and a whole lot of warm, wonderful spices. I added some sweet citrus orange juice to sort of make it pop and a little bit of ground ginger. And I just mix this up. And again, guys, this is while the veggies are roasting in the oven. Now you take your salmon fillets and upside down, if you do have the skin on, you just sort of dunk it in, submerge it in that bowl and let them sit and marinate and soak up all the mm. yummy sauce while the veggies are in. Then when the veggies come out, you nestle the salmon nestle. slices mm. uh, nestle in between so the veggies. Yeah. Right? And you want to make sure that they're touching the heated pan. So get all four of those fillets in. Whoops, I did that upside down, Joy. I was going to say, <laughs> wait, which way are we putting? All right, so skin side no. down. Skin side down. Or you could also buy fillets that don't have the skin, whichever mm -hmm. you prefer. Oh, and then the remaining sauce goes on top. And then this goes back in the oven again on 450. Keep the heat going for just 10 minutes Ooh. and then you put some herbs on top and you got that yourself a party. Wow. That's all there is to it. Now you got a cheesy one it. for us, right? Okay. So now we're going to change directions, guys. We are making a sheet pan baked feta sausage and veggies. I needed Ooh, to jump on this trend. Everybody's talking about the baked feta yes. now. And this time I'm using very different vegetables. So these kind of scream summer. I have beautiful, vibrant tomatoes. I have sweet kernels of corn. I use canned corn. Mm -hmm. It works with frozen too. But corn. if you have fresh corn, of course. And we have some uh, zucchini, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This time I'm adding in ground cumin and some crushed red pepper flakes, some lime slices, oh. and a little bit of salt. So this also will get all stirred up. It's going to go on your baking sheet. This goes in the oven. These are a little bit more delicate, these vegetables. So the oven is set at 425 just for 20 minutes. Then you take it out, and you're going to put in pre-cooked sliced poultry sausage. Again, nestle it right in <laughs> with the vegetables. And then sticks of feta. You're going to, mm. there, there goes my sausage. And there's all types of pre-cooked varieties at the market. Mm -hmm. And I buy the block feta cut it into strips. It never melts no. in the oven, but it sort of becomes softer and spreadable. Mm. And guys, I'm telling you, you take this out, you give it a squeeze with fresh lime juice oh, and some fantastic. herbs. And if you could get a bite with all three, the feta, the vegetables, and mm. the sausage, that looks you are amazing. Mm. Well, you enjoy halloumi so cheese would be probably great with that, too. Mm. Wow, wow that would be super. Oh, it's, a, it's a Greek grilling cheese. Oh. So, Joy, you... thank you. Joy, that was awesome. You thank you it. so much. Have a great weekend, Joy. Oh, I want all bye of bye, that. Guys. Folks, for those recipes, it's very simple. Today.com slash food. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our good pal today, nutritionist Joy Bauer, back with two easy, delicious ways to dress up a simple piece of toast. Mm. <clears throat> Happy New Year, everyone. Today, I am toasting a healthier 2021 with two scrumptious spins on toast. First, an addictive chocolate peanut butter spread. The secret ingredient is this peanut powder. And you can find this in uh, the grocery store or you could order it online. And it is packed with protein. Next, cocoa powder, which is filled with brain-boosting flavonoids, some sugar, and a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add six to eight tablespoons of water. And this is going to mix together to create the creamiest, dreamiest chocolate peanut butter spread. Just keep stirring and look at this, guys. It transforms into a delicious, lick the spoon, addictive spread. And now we are ready to build our toast. Putting a nice, generous amount of my chocolate peanut butter spread right on the toast. I'm gonna top it with potassium packed bananas. And really, you could put whatever fruit you want on top. And of course, the bananas have potassium, they have fiber. And on this slice, I'm also gonna add some vitamin C rich strawberries for extra flavor and extra nutrition. And the best part, guys, there is so much chocolate peanut butter sauce left over for dipping. <laughs> And now for some savory satisfaction, caprese toast. It's a classic combo that is completely customizable. And I'm starting with the bottom base of mashed avocado. And avocado is great because it's loaded with heart healthy fat, it's got potassium, and it's got a lot of fiber too. So I'm just mashing this down as our first layer. And you probably know what comes next. Lycopene rich tomatoes. They also have vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. And I'm putting on mozzarella, which adds some calcium. And last but not least, just some torn basil leaves, which makes the kitchen smell so good. This is one layered tower of deliciousness. But one more thing. I like to drizzle on a balsamic glaze right over the top. And if you can't find balsamic glaze, you could also take regular balsamic vinegar and you can reduce it in a small saucepan over a low heat for about 10, 20 minutes and it will thicken right up. And that's what I call a toast to a healthy 2021. Mm. Welcome to today all day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Oh my God. It, doesn't it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day.
Welcome to Today All Day. This was our biggest problem on the show, backwards walking. Jenna? Yes? It's Jerry. Oh, Jerry, hi. Hi. Remember we said we were going to have coffee today? Oh, gosh, am I late? What do you think? Okay, okay I'm on my way right now. Oh. Family. Fantastic. Oh, lucky who's here. Hey, Hi. how are you? How are you? Don't hit your head. Mwah. Nice to see you. Thank you for meeting me for a little coffee. You're really overdressed for just coffee. <laughs> well, you know what? You I came straight elegant. from the show. Oh. But also, I knew there'd be pickles involved. Hi. Okay. Um, sure, I'd love a coffee. Me too, I'd love a coffee. Okay, okay great. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You so, didn't... have you had a coffee already this morning? I, I've had um, three coffees. How many have you had? I've had one espresso. Every day starts with espresso. But it didn't always used it to. It didn't always. For years. I used to do jokes about I, oh, I thought coffee people were so weird. What is this drink you have to drink? Why? I can't talk until I've had my coffee. Why? Because <laughs> well... I just got up. Yeah? <laughs> I feel tired when I get up. Yeah, we all do. So, okay, you didn't drink coffee, and yet you pitched a show. That well, and... I was drinking it at that point. That's, oh. what, that's where I got the idea for the show. I went, this is a fantastic drink. It gets people so chatty. This is great. Now, there's something that's, that must be open-minded about you, because to, to go from a no-coffee person to a coffee person takes, you know, I feel like most people stick in one lane. Yeah, I think I am pretty open-minded. I have done a lot of very weird, different things. <laughs> I have explored a lot of avenues in my journey to uh, perfect the human system. And have you perfected it? Pretty close. You look perfect. You look great. No, I, I feel like uh, I'm 68 and uh, I feel pretty good. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of Jerry Seinfeld's hit show, Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee, he's releasing the Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee book which takes readers behind the scenes of some of the most iconic episodes. Let's talk about this show and this book. I heard okay. that the most nervous you were, which kind of makes sense, was when you went to interview President Obama at the White House. Right. Your I'm... producer said you were a little scared. Yeah. Well, I felt like I was kind of representing every comedian that ever lived. Yes. And I was getting to do something that no comedian has ever done, which is do a little funny bit yeah. in the Oval Office. Yes. Which I don't think anyone's ever done. Did Dana Carvey never do that? Not in the real yeah. Oval Office. Yes. I don't think so. But it was a bit, you know, knocking on the window. Yes. And uh, sitting on the chair. And I heard that the Secret Service were the ones that told you to go knock on the window. I mean, you were behind the bushes and knocked on the window. No, I knew I was going to knock on the window. I had asked them. Is that They okay? said, could I do, I asked, I don't remember whose idea it yeah. was. But they said, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Were Which you... I couldn't believe they were going to let I me know. do that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I thought, this is a great opportunity in the history of comedy. You know, yes. to knock on the window of the Oval Office while the president's Thank working. Thank you. And also, there's lots of Secret Service. Yeah. That are hanging out there. Yeah. So it was a kind of a risk to your to to your safety, right? Why? Why would I be scared? Well, what of if them? one Secret Service man didn't know that Jerry Seinfeld was popping up behind the bushes knocking? I I, I trust the Secret Service. This show, as you said, is kind of like a Valentine. Yes. Like a funny Valentine to yes. comedians. Yes. Why? You know, let me let me tell you what it what it's like to be a comedian. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's the greatest life if you can manage it. Yes. So the hard part is the comedian part. Yes. Making people laugh every night is hard. But if you have that, if you can do that, the the rest of your life you're with comedians. Yes. And this is becomes a gigantic component of your life and is equally as enjoyable. <laughs> so I wanted people to see this other side. You know, I would say my life is 25% doing comedy. Yes. 75% hanging out with comedians. Hanging out with funny people. Yes. So you're constantly laughing. Yes. 
But I think, I guess what surprises surprises me about the show is that it is hilarious, which I, people would expect, but it's also kind of human and mm -hmm. lovely and touching. There were moments where you want to kind of tear up, and I guess y'all are people, but that part, <laughs> that part surprised me. Well, we are people, but we're not normal people. We're, we're all, and what I have found is the gene is kind of the same, yeah. but it gets implanted in all these different types of people. But the essential gene, the comedy gene, is the same. And so it became a study of that or kind of an exploration of that. Look at all these different people that are all very different and they all have this little thing. Yeah. This little, uh, I don't want to call it a defect, but uh, <laughs> It's a, let's call it an aspect. An aspect of their yeah. personality. Yeah. Do you remember when you knew you had that? I didn't, that I thought I was funny, you mean? You knew you were funny. Because you're not just that you thought you well, were funny. Well, I thought everyone was funny. As a little kid. When you're eight, everyone is funny. No, but not everybody is funny. You know what I mean? You <laughs> can think back to like the kids that are not funny. Yeah, there were some, but there were a lot of funny kids. Yes, that's true. Kids are funny. Right, right? and then something, between 13 and 15 yes. is when it gets uh, slips away because the pressure yeah. of, oh, I've got to be a person now. Yeah, and you're embarrassed, maybe. Yeah, and well, you, you... Girls can be. You Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Be yes. embarrassed by that by part being of being funny. By, well, being too big or something, right. too much personality. Did your friends think you were funny? Yeah. Do they still think you're funny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they do. You, so like you're the funny one. I'm the funny one. That's great. But Barbara's pretty funny. If you yes, know my Barbara sister, funny, she's yeah. funny, but right. I do like to make people laugh. I mean, what does it feel like to you to make people laugh? It's, it's the best thing in the world. It's a, it's a couple of seconds of weightlessness mm -hmm. where everything in your mind, everything you think about and worry about and work on your whole life is just gone for a second. And it's... And it lasts, you know, you feel, you know, if you have like a big laugh, Yes. it lasts, you know, for you, the rest of the day you go, that was so funny. And it's you know? fun to see it in kids, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I have a child who like, we actually think is going to be the next Amy Schumer. Oh, wow. She's very wild and hilarious and will do anything for a laugh. And when she gets an authentic one, like to see that glimmer in their eye, to wow. see the glimmer, you know what I mean? There is something to it. Yeah. The trick is to not lose it. Yeah. You know, don't don't dismiss it. I think people people think, well, what what use is this? You know. Yeah, I wonder, like, in a world that feels pretty dark, you know, I think we can all be like, gosh, what what service are we unless we're doing more? Mm -hmm. But and I kind of used to be self-deprecating about my job sitting next to Hoda, but I realized that I'm making people feel good. Yeah. And that that is of service in some way, in some small way. It's not a small way. It's not a small way. It's a big way. And do you feel that way too? Do you feel like you know what? Actually, <laughs> making people laugh is something that's super important. It is, yeah. I think I don't think of it kind of socially. I think of it in in the moment. Yeah. It's really important to me to get this laugh right now, because. Yeah. I don't know. You, you become um, you kind of become a machine in comedy. You just like all day, every day. You're thinking about how do I get that joke to work. Yeah. And. I don't. I, I have a, a friend that always talks to me about this. He always says it's not. It is a bigger thing. You are providing a right. relief. I always say the silly stuff we do. This, you know, it's it's meaningless. You know, he says no. It's extremely meaningful. So, it's a nice thought. Mm -hmm. NBC News streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs>
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. So you don't prepare at all. You don't Google. Like, what if you don't know the person? You know everybody? I Google. I read the first three sentences. I just want to know where they grew up. Are they yeah. married? They have kids. Okay. That's all. I don't need to know anything else about a person to have a So Wikipedia is really your sort of... Yeah. Yeah. I. The things I'm interested in are not, in, you know, in the bio. Which makes the, the show so good. Oh, thanks. And the coffee table book. Did you ever think you'd have a coffee table book? No. Are you proud of it? I didn't. <laughs> well, they don't give you a book unless the show works. Yes. So, yes, I am proud of it. And the show worked, and people are asking, will there be more? They are. I don't know. I actually just started thinking about it just recently, but I did a movie, and I'm kind of... Uh, you did a movie? I made a movie, yeah, during the, uh, the virus. We wrote a movie, and then we made it. And now we're finishing it, and it's going to come out pretty soon. Wow, what does that feel like? Amazing. Yeah. That's something I never thought I would do. But because of the virus, I wasn't doing anything, and I had time to write it. Because otherwise, I, don't, I can't stop doing stand-up. I can't stop. It's too, too much fun. Yeah, it's just like, it's like my life <laughs> uh, routine. I have to, you know, it's you so much fun. So now the fact that there's going to be this film... Yeah. Can you tell me anything about it? Sure. Have you already talked about it and I just didn't do no, enough I research? No, I haven't. I haven't. What, what is it? Um, it's a, it takes place in 1964. Wow. So it's a period piece. Yes. It takes place in Battle Creek, Michigan. And it's um, about how they invented the Pop-Tart. Wow. <laughs> That's genius. Yeah. Do you like a Pop-Tart? I love the Pop-Tart. Which, which is your favorite flavor? Brown sugar cinnamon. Me too. Of course. Me too. But a lot of people like strawberry with the frosty. That's them. No, but brown sugar cinnamon. See, that was the probably the first. Is that the first thing you made when you were a kid that was hot? Yes. Yeah. Or maybe an Eggo waffle. But hot, right, yeah. that's the most luxurious thing. Like, because an Eggo waffle is just like toast, glorified yeah, toast. Right. A but Pop-Tart Pop is compl complicated. It has all that. Sometimes some of them have yeah. sprinkles. Mm -hmm. So is this a is this a real story or you? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so it there are certain real elements in it. Okay. The truth of the story is, Post and Kellogg's both had the idea at the same time. Wow. And then they competed to who could come out with it first. Yes. And then we just completely made up. Came up. It's totally insane. Comedy. It's like 15 stand-up comics are in this. Are you, are you starring in it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I directed it. That is incredible. I know. It's really exciting. Most people just learned how to, like, bake bread during the pandemic, and you yeah. wrote and directed and are going to star yeah. in a film. Yeah. Can we get coffee and talk about it when it comes out? Sure. And maybe bring Jessica. But I do want to ask you. you. Your wife posted something right. on Instagram. Right. I follow her. Right. I adore her. <laughs> um, I thought Thank you. it was a simple way to say something that needs to be said. In October, Jerry's wife of 23 years, Jessica, posted on Instagram in support of the Jewish faith after a string of highly publicized anti-Semitic events. The post read, I support my Jewish friends and the Jewish people. And the caption read, if you don't know what to say, you can just say this in your feed. When we look at the rise of anti-Semitism mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in this country and really around the world, mm -hmm. um, what, like, how, what, do you, what do you think of it? She found a simple, and I thought, non-aggressive yeah. way to say something that, as we said, unfortunately needs to be said, but does need to be said. And uh, I thought that was very uh, special and, and fantastic thing she did. Mm -hmm. Hard to do. It is hard right? to do. Well, simplicity. Most things in that venue, it's going to trigger someone. It's going to inflame. We're so quick for, to inflame, right? Mm -hmm. Both sides of any debate. Yes. Women, uh, gender, ev everything. Yeah. Right? This is the culture we live in. Flash paper. Yeah. Instant, violent yes. verbiage. Yes. Right? And she found a way to sort of quiet it. Right. And hopefully also raise awareness. Yeah, that was a great thing. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs>
you get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News. Streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Okay, I want to go over a list of some of these comedians that were on. Okay. And just if you have something to say, okay. say it. Um, Eddie Murphy. I feel like Eddie Murphy was like, well, was maybe the best episode there ever was. That was probably next to the Obama one, which was unique for those circumstances, yes. obvious. But uh, reconnecting with Eddie, who he and I started together the same month, the same club together. And then, of course, he quickly went one way, and then I went another way. And, and then years, after all those years, to get back together was so thrilling. And he was so, again, you, I talk about this, thing yeah you know yeah and there it is and he's still got it you know and he's still talking about it and he talks about in the show being on Long Island and going to these clubs with these guys in a car and then after the club you go to a place like this oh my gosh this is the life this is the life hanging out with the company you do the show you do great you do horrible <laughs> but you wind up here there's Having a, coffee and a pastrami sandwich. Yes, and and writing jokes on napkins, and making fun of each other, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Did you ha do you have napkins where you have jokes? I mean, do you remember you yourself doing that, coming to a, a no? Place? I got a notebook. Yeah, I, said, oh, I, notebook. I need a notebook for this work profession. I need a <laughs> notebook for this type of work. Yeah, but you probably have. I'm sure you have written a joke or two down on a napkin. Yes, I have. To be reunited with him must have been very cool. It was. It was uh, beautiful. It was beautiful. And you could feel that. Oh, that's great. You could. So. You've seen a few of these. Yes, I've seen a few of yours. Oh, that's nice. People love the show. Wow. Did you not know that? I, for most of the time I was doing it, I didn't think it was working. You didn't think it while you were doing it? Yeah. But I loved it. And I wanted to make it. Yeah. I just wanted to make this. Well, I, I want to show people this side of comedy life. Because people just got so interested in comedy yes. the past 20 yes. years, you know? Yes. So that's why I did it. I think also it's like, and why people are asking now is that that kind of connection you know, that kind of being with somebody funny and making each other laugh, that kind of conversation, especially since y'all were together mm -hmm. in this small area, like, mm -hmm. was something we, we missed during the pandemic, you know? Well, you tell me, don't you feel, I mean, you do more interviews than anyone. This kind of thing yeah. is different, right? Yes. Because you're not, because just like you said, there is no preparation. Right. You're just sitting down for a wonderful conversation over right. coffee. Right, right. But also, I think, with the goal of laughing and having others laugh, too. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lightness to that, right? Very much so. And I'm not really much of a podcast person, because I like edited content. Yeah. I like, I love that I could take three hours and give you a great 12. Yes, yes. <laughs> Because that, that's Who what comedy doesn't? is. Yes. When you go see a comedian, he's basically going, I have lots of crazy thoughts, some of them are funny, and I've cut it down to just that. Yes. That's what you're seeing. Because when you work on a show, you write something, H how long does it take like, to get down to what you're actually going to perform? Well, I don't know, because I do it all the time. Yeah. But everything is trimmed down to the... And, and 
essential aspect of comedy is it has to be trimmed down to the absolute minimum. It's like a poem. Yes. It has to be like and a poem. good books, really good books are yeah. edited well. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the most important part of it. Part yes. of all of it. Yeah, but books are long. I love books. That's nice. You don't? I do. I love books, but I don't read a lot. I'm trying to think if I have anything good. If for I can get rid of the phone. Yeah, yeah. I put the phone I, away. Put I the might phone away. Read. What are you doing on your phone? Nothing good. Scrolling. Well, how else do you get to the next thing? But if we have to scroll. But what are you? Are you looking at articles? Or are you looking at social media? What What are you doing? Are you I on look Instagram? At cars. I look I look on Instagram, and I love YouTube. No, you don't. I love YouTube. What do you like on YouTube? Cat videos? Here's what I found the greatest video on YouTube <laughs> what is it? yesterday. What? I have spent years on YouTube, countless <laughs> hours, and yesterday I found a video that changed my life so powerfully. A guy made a video about you know how when you turn on your windshield wipers, sometimes they go. J -j 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 -j. He, yes. He made a video about how to fix that. <laughs> how do you fix it? And you it? don't need new wipers. What? How do you? And you don't need a new wiper arm. It's an adjustment with two wrenches, and he shows you. Would you, you ever do that? Oh, I can't wait to do it. Are you gonna do it? Yeah. So that's what I love. You love it. Because I hate when wipers do that. I hate that sound. I know what you and mean. And somebody solved it, and they made a video and that, and and showed everyone. How, how did you come to that YouTube video? I don't know. They, I they like. They targeted the, you. Yeah. You were. I YouTube. like the algorithm. I don't watch anything unless the algorithm suggests it. Well, you do, and they just targeted you with the yeah. perfect video, which is the windshield wipers. Windshield wiper wipers. adjustment. So you like that kind of like how to fix it? You're not into. No, I'm into. I'm into. I'm. Surfing. Oh, surfing. Baseball, cars, dogs. I like cute dog videos. Yeah, who doesn't? You know. You should follow Round Boys on Instagram. It's really good. It's just round animals. <laughs> Your wife would love it. <laughs> just all about the roundness of animals. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love things. Like, I love unboxing videos. Unboxing videos. Here's what it is. I really think. Obsession is a nice way to go through life. Yeah. Being obsessive. Yes. As long as you don't go completely crazy. Yes. Obsessing, I've obsessed on everything about everything my entire well, life. Well, that's true. That's why you're famous, right? Because the, the show is like it's obsessing all, over the little nuance exactly. of life. Right. Yes. So that's entertainment to me. Yeah. Well, it's entertainment to us, too. Yeah. Turns out. Turns out it's entertainment to all of us as well. Yeah, but we all live these lives of uh, micro-obsession, yes. right? Not micro-aggression, micro-obsession. Micro okay, I've learned so much. And those things, I think, are, if you miss out on the fun of that, Yes. I just think it's fun. It's a fun, I, I like to find entertainment in life. Yes. I don't want to just drag myself through this. I want to enjoy it. Yes. No, it's so true. If you can't find the fun and the nuance and the tediousness of life, then you're not living. What was the point of yeah, all of that? It's true. Right? It's true. Find the fun in it. And I personally believe the fun is in the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Sure. Not is. in the special. Mm -hmm. The ordinary. I love right? this so much. I know, me too. I, I could sit here forever. Me too. Cheers. Well, cheers. But can we do it when your movie comes out? Yes. Isn't it better? It's, well, the Pop Tarts, I can't wait.
Hi there, and welcome to Start Today. I'm Stephanie Mansour, today's fitness contributor. Whether you're starting to exercise for the first time or striving to reach fitness goals, the new year offers the perfect chance to push yourself to new heights. And you've come to the right place for guidance and motivation. Start Today is today's wellness and fitness community where over 100,000 members share their health journeys. Last year, we gathered members of our Start Today community to walk through Universal Studios Studios. And now we're taking it a step further. In this episode, we'll share healthy and delicious recipes, workouts that you can do at home, and some incredible transformations. Before I began helping people, I went on my own health journey to lose weight and gained an understanding of the importance of working out and eating well. In the Start Today group, I've gotten a chance to know incredible individuals who are on their own wellness journeys, sharing their progress to motivate others. Recently, I spoke with Karen Dallas, whose life has been transformed through thoughtful and committed exercise. Let's take a look. So I would love for us to share with everyone, um, first of all, can you tell us like how you found the Start Today group? Sure. Um, a few years ago, I went through terrible trauma. I, I lost so many loved ones, including my husband, and I was really in a dark place. So I spent a couple of years working on healing myself emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Uh, and then earlier this year, I thought now's the time to tackle this uh, physical yeah. element of it because I had gained so much weight during this time. And um, so I thought I'm going to start researching uh, groups that I could be a part of. And before I even got started on the research, I received an email from the Today Show. And it said, join our June walking challenge. And I thought, hey, I could walk. Yeah. You know, I can do a walking challenge. So I signed up that day. Uh -huh. It was June 1st. It was June 1st when I got the email. Yep. And so I signed up that day and I got going and um, never looked back. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, all right, so and then can you tell everyone like where you were at then? Because I know, um, I remember like it was hard for you to, to walk like oh. without being in pain, right? Yeah, you know, I knew I could walk. I was, I was ready to go. I was all energized. I got about a block down the street and I thought, oh, Lord help me. I'm not gonna make it. So I had to stop and stretch my back out. My back was hurting so badly. And I thought, if my neighbors see me, they're probably gonna call 911, because I was just a mess. I was a mess. And if this was so odd for me, because I've always been so active, mm -hmm. you know, up until the last few years. And so it was rough, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. I, I went a block, I would stretch, I'd walk another block, I'd stretch. Yeah. And that went on for a couple of weeks. I thought, I'm not giving up. I'm yeah. not giving up, I'm, I can do this. Yeah, what made and, you not give up? Like, what what made it like a, a wake up call instead of like you know a reason to keep yourself sidelined? Well, if I don't change, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't. I don't want this to be my life. Yeah, I don't want to be in pain. I'm too young to be in this kind of shape. I want to have a good quality of life, a good retirement. I want to do fun things. By the end of June, no pain. I was walking the full 20 to 30 minutes a day. Okay. So you can do it. You just have to stick with it. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And then give us kind of an overview of like June until now. Like give us, give us your successes. Well, in July, since I was feeling pretty good about myself at that point, that I could actually walk. Right. <laughs> I signed up for one of your uh, sessions, the weight loss group. Uh huh. So that was the first time I actually joined uh, a community uh -huh. of like-minded people when we were in this to lose some weight. Yeah. And that was life-changing for me as well. Yeah. So um, I joined that as a 12-week program, mm -hmm. made it through the 12 weeks, didn't have enough apparently because I signed up a second time. Right, right. And, then, and now we're in it again, and I, I'm just really making very positive changes. Yes, I love it, and we'll talk more about those programs in a minute too because I want people to know. You know, it's it's like you've made so many changes. Like you've you've changed how you view food. You've changed like the emotional eating component of all of this. 
um, your mood, your your like energy around right. the exercise and the eating and the taking care of yourself, prioritizing yourself has has really transformed from where you were, you know, prior to six months ago. Um, so what can you tell everyone how much weight you've lost and like the different the difference in your energy levels and your outlook? I've lost about 20 pounds uh, uh -huh. since June. Um, well, really since July, June uh -huh. trying to get that walking implemented. I didn't start losing weight until I joined the weight loss group. Yeah. And so I've lost about 20 pounds since July. Uh -huh. uh, building a great foundation. I think the thing is to do something sustainable that you can manage for the rest of your life. Right. I don't want to lose 20 pounds to gain back 20 pounds. Right. You know, I want to maintain this. So I'm building a great foundation. I feel confident that I can continue and this is going to be a lifelong uh, habit for me. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And what are three tips that you would give someone um, like they're just starting out or maybe they're like you and they, they were walking, you know, down the block and then already in pain. Like what, what tips would you give to them, if any? <laughs> Oh, I, I could write a book on tips, maybe okay. not, what not to do, but uh, a few things to do is uh, find your community. I think that's one of the most important. Find your uh, team, your cheerleading squad, uh, people that support you. My sister is my biggest cheerleader. Uh, my neighbors, my friends, our community. Yeah. Our community is, oh, I, I'm thankful every day. Yes. Them. They make my, my gratitude journal very oh. <laughs> um one of the things you can get wisdom so much just from a t-shirt sometimes and i have this t-shirt that i wear that says no one succeeds alone oh and that I love is that. so true yeah so doubt you can't do this alone mm -hmm. you've got to have a team around you and you've got to have people supporting you so that's one tip i love uh, it I, I would say the second tip is something that i learned from you Perfection is not sustainable. Yes. Let's go for that passing grade. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're going for a C. We're just right. looking to pass. We do not get bonus points if we get a B or an A plus or extra credit on the A plus, you know. Yes. I was I always that. an A student, so that took me a minute, but when it clicked, it clicked. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I can do this. I can do a C at least every day. Some days will be an A, some days will be a B, but we're going to yeah. shoot for that C. Yep. And then and some probably, days might be an F, but it'll oh, balance well, out to yeah. a C. Yeah, we try not to talk about those. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, some days are an F. <laughs> some days you just sit around in your pajamas, okay? Right. And that's all right. Right, exactly, exactly. And I'd probably say my third tip would be you can do hard things. Mm. You know, don't sell yourself short. Mm. You can do this. Um, life is hard, you know, life sucks sometimes, but then it's great. Yeah. You know, life is also great. So you can do hard things. You can get through this. You can have a better quality of life. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all here for you. We're mm -hmm. all here to support you. Yeah. Uh, re reach out for help. Yep. Go back to tip one. Have your yeah. community. <laughs> Correct. That's right. What a transformation. It was so great to chat with Karen and hear her story. Coming up, we'll be digging deep into meal prep with three easy recipes anyone can make. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Start Today. Part of feeling your best is fueling your body with fruits, vegetables, protein, fat, and yes, carbs. To help set us up for success in the kitchen, registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto is here with three simple recipes to make meal prep easier. Hey, Vanessa. Hi, so nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh what gosh. are we making today? Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're making egg cups. Egg Ooh. cups are super yes. easy. They help you with batch cooking and uh -huh. meal prep. Everybody always wants things to be done quickly. Yes. And so today we're going to get it done. I love it. So many of our members ask for quick, you know, grab and go breakfast. Yep. So I love making egg muffins myself. So I'm totally. excited to get started. Yeah. And it's not just a breakfast. It can be lunch and a dinner and a snack. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to start with our inclusions. Okay. Um, we're going to start with some spinach, good source mm -hmm. of fiber, Love it. vitamin K is going to help you. Um, <laughs> we have some cheddar cheese, good source of fat, and then onions is just going to give us a little bit of bite and kick. So okay. I like to mix those together, mix it up, and then okay. you're going to take a quarter cup and just like loosely pack into oh. the muffin tin. Now, can you use different types of cheese, like feta? I yes. love feta. Feta cheese is naturally low fat. It's uh -huh. also helpful for people who are lactose intolerant because it's made from sheep's milk. Okay. Uh, but you never have to go and buy low-fat feta because it's already low-fat. Okay. Which is amazing. That's a great tip. Yes. So okay, so gonna, what do we do next? So you're going to pack that in. Oh, That's I see. We be, put this in, in the bottom. Yes, you put that in the oh. bottom. Yes. It's just a better way to fill it properly right. so you don't over. I've always fill. been filling these wrong. And then it, and then it goes <laughs> up, right? Yes, it does. And <laughs> yeah. I wonder why it's like exploding over the top. Yeah. Okay. So I have eight <laughs> eggs here. I'm going to whisk these till they're pretty smooth. So then we're going to have some salt Every and last. pepper. All right. Backwards and milk, just so okay. we can like fluff that up. Okay, so, great. Can people use almond milk or you know other types of milk if they're lactose intolerant? You can. Okay. The only thing is that the almond milk, if you are picking one that's sweetened yeah. or vanilla, it's going to give it a different flavor. Right. So you're going to want to make sure that you pick one that is unsweetened and original flavor. Original flavor. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. you don't want to change that out. Okay, okay. Great. So we're just going to start. Pouring. Okay. Just like, so we want to make sure not to overfill. Yeah. So we might have to like go back and forth a little bit. That's another problem I've had making these. I fill yeah. everything up to the yeah. brim. And then it just like goes <laughs> really high. Yeah. And yeah. then you're kind of in a little bit of trouble. But that's okay. So if you had if you had two of these every day, you'd have enough for breakfast for six days, almost Correct. a whole week. Yeah. 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 And these microwave nicely after we bake them. And Thirty seconds. Them. Okay. It's like like very quick. This okay. Is like you will be very happy. Yes. With so now we're gonna put these in the oven at three twenty five for twenty to twenty five minutes, and we'll know that they're done when we you know feel them being firm. So okay. if we want to just like head over to the oven yeah. and put them in, we can get started. Great. These look so good. Uh, I know. I'm sometimes <laughs> impressed by myself. Yes. Um, so, you know, you let these cool for about okay. five to seven minutes. We don't want to burn the roof of our mouths. Okay. Um, and then we can store them okay. up to five days. Can I try oh, one? Of okay, good. Oh my God. It tastes better than it looks, yeah. actually. It's super delicious. And wow. This is like the beginning of the batch cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody mm -hmm. thinks like a batch cook and meal prep is just like five containers with the same gross right. salad that you're gonna have to eat every single day. And right. that's not true. It's like having a series of proteins, yes. a series of fruits and vegetables and things that you could just grab very quickly. Yeah. And this is something that obviously you can have for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You can have two of them for breakfast with a side of berries. Okay. You can have it for dinner or lunch with uh -huh. a side salad. Mm -hmm. You can, two or three of them. You can mm -hmm. have one as a snack. Yeah. It's just like super versatile and like easily stored. Yes. So the next thing we're gonna do is shredded chicken. Yes. Okay, so, I gotta be honest with you. This, this really grosses me out. I am not a fan of the raw meat. Well. But it's because I don't like watching the transformation from raw to cooked. So I think this is great. I can just leave it in there and, and not think about it. 100%. <laughs> this is for you. So I'm okay. going to give you the Oh, tongs. thank God. Okay, I don't have to touch this with my hands. <laughs> yep, All right. so it's okay. two pounds of chicken. Chicken is a great source of protein. And we're gonna use some neutral spices here. So garlic powder and some pepper. Mm-hmm and some salt. Okay. And then we are going to add chicken broth. You could also do vegetable broth. Okay. Uh, just don't do water because then it will have no, no flavor, flavor. Okay. and you will be miserable. Okay. Then <laughs> so, you will wonder why you did this. Yeah. And so then we're just going to put it four hours on high. Good. And once I do this, I do not have to look at it until no. it's done. That's right. So this is done. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, Vanessa, I've actually never 
shredded chicken before. Oh, I'm gonna show you. A lot of our members know I, I like eating healthy, but yeah. I don't enjoy cooking that much. So this is great so far, but how do I shred? Okay, so you're gonna take both okay. of your forks, okay. and you're gonna go right here. See in the sits, okay. And then you're right. just going to pull. Okay. So you can just pull it, you can have as little pieces or as big pieces oh. as you'd like. Okay, this is actually working. Yes, it is wow. working. It is. You're a genius. I mean, <laughs> you know, we season this really uh -huh. neutral so uh -huh. that we could repurpose this chicken for later. So okay. I usually have this as my emergency protein in my refrigerator. Yes, great right? idea. And so then you could use it to make tacos, uh -huh. burritos. You could also just like put this on top of a salad later. Yeah, yeah. You could boil some pasta and put that on the side mm -hmm. and then also have some vegetables. So it doesn't need to be this like perfectly plated chicken right, breast, right? right? And yeah. it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be made today, mm -hmm, right? You can mm -hmm. just make it and then have it for later. Yeah, and I love this. This is one of those principles of meal prepping. You want to be able to repurpose things. So the fact that we didn't overly season this or you know right. do a too elaborate of a recipe That's right. makes it really easy for us to use That's this right. for many different meals. Very easy. Right, so coming up next, you're gonna make a sauce. Cilantro avocado sauce. Yum. Mm -hmm. That could go on the chicken. Exactly. See, this is how we meal prep. So I'm gonna start with the avocado. Okay. So you're gonna do a quarter, mm -hmm. so half of a half. Okay. That looks so nice and fresh. Oh. And this is a healthy fat. Healthy fat, yep. exactly. But you know, the serving size, which I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. is a quarter. Okay. Right? And so, but a whole one, if you, uh -huh. eat, if you eat an entire avocado, it would be 10 grams of fiber. Okay. But it would be really high in saturated fat, so we want to stick to that right. quarter of, right. of it. So okay. then you're going to add the cilantro. Okay. Just whole like this? Whole like that, okay. stems and all. Okay. Ooh, this is easy. I know. I like to make things easy. <laughs> Garlic. Okay. Now, you know, I'm half Italian and we love our garlic, so could I do more than this if I wanted? Yes. Okay. It's just that, you know, everybody right. is particular and they might think this is spicy. Right. I would probably do six cloves. But right, two, right, okay. Two is fine, <laughs> two is fine. <laughs> then we're gonna do a plain Greek yogurt. And so, Ooh. you know, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates uh -huh. help to keep you full. So where are we getting the protein from? We have to get it from the yogurt. Greek yogurt. Exactly. Okay. So it's about 21 grams of protein. Okay. You have the fat from the avocado. Yeah. Some flavor. It's great. So now we're gonna add some salt. Okay. Lime juice. Ooh. And then a little bit of water, about two thirds of a cup. So I'm just going to smooth this out. I personally like it to be like a little bit chunky. Okay. But you know, the to each their own. Exactly. <laughs> the preference is yours. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It smells like I'm in a restaurant. No. This know. was so easy to make. <laughs> so I have some here okay, for you. Oh, to thank taste. you so Please much. Taste. Okay. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. So good. I love this. Yep. You can put that on top mm -hmm. of a green bowl. You mm -hmm. can put that inside of a sandwich, like a you know, a turkey wrap or mm -hmm. something. You I would put it on a salad too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our members talk too about how they have all those staples. Like they have the chicken or they have the ground beef or even even pastas and salads, but they're looking to jazz things up. So this is a great way. This is so flavorful. Totally. It's beautiful. Yeah. I bet the store is great in the fridge too. Five days in the fridge, or you can also just you know, portion it out into Ziploc bags if you want to make a oh. number of them and okay. just, like, date them, and then you can just keep pulling them out. Because that's the other thing. Maybe you're not going to want this every week, right? but it's nice to have it in your arsenal and just yes. know you can put it out and it stores really great and you can put it on anything. Amazing. Thanks, Vanessa. I'm so glad. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Well, coming up next, I'm sharing a few exercises from our January Fitness Challenge. So stay tuned. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. What's the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's a new year and we're focusing on building healthy habits for both our mind and body. I'm going to walk you through a few exercises to strengthen the upper body, lower body, and finally the core. And the best part, you don't need any equipment. We're gonna get started with a modified push-up. This is a push-up on your knees. So lowering down onto the mat, we're gonna line the wrists up with the front of the mat. Then shift your shoulders forward over your wrists and bring the knees back a couple of inches behind the hips. Pull the abs in tight, and then we're gonna lower down, chest towards the floor, elbows out to the sides, and press up. Lower down and press up, good. This is modified because we're on our knees to take pressure off of the wrists and make this a little bit easier. Great job. Now the next move is arm circles. And you might say, gosh, well how can I work my arms if I don't have any weights? Well, let me tell you, if you do this for 60 seconds, forwards and backwards, you are gonna feel the burn. This is something super simple that you can do while you're waiting for something to microwave, while you're stirring something on the stove and waiting for it to boil. You can lift your arms up and start to do arm circles, or you can even do this while you're waiting in line. The next exercise starts with a squat, but we move the squat by turning it into a walking squat. So we're gonna start with the feet as wide as the hips. Pull the abs in, reach the glutes back, coming into that squat. Then we're gonna step to the side and bring the foot into the squat position and lower down. Then we're gonna step to the side, bring the foot to meet it in the squat position and lower down. You can go side to side with this and just make sure you do that squat as you bring the feet back into the squat position. Great job. Next, we're gonna do something similar, but this time with a lunge, but not just any lunge, we're gonna do a half lunge. So we're gonna start with one foot forward and one foot back, feet as wide as the hips. We're gonna bend both knees halfway, so about a 45 degree angle here, as opposed to a full lunge with that 90 degree angle. So this halfway lunge here, and then we're gonna step forward and lower down into that half lunge. And then you can turn around and do this again, walking forward about five times with each leg. So here we go in that half lunge, and then we step into the half lunge, and we step into the half lunge. Great job. Now, the last exercise we're gonna do is for the core. So we're gonna get down on the ground. Now again, this is a total full body workout without any equipment. So lowering down onto your back, what we're gonna do next is lift the legs up, pull the abs in by taking a deep breath in. Exhale. Pull that navel in towards the spine. Now from here, we're gonna curl up and reach towards one foot, lowering the other foot down, and then switch and reach up. Good, switch and reach up, switch and reach up. It's okay to lower the shoulder blades a little bit as you're switching the legs, and then you curl up higher to reach towards the toes. If you can't touch the toes, and if you're touching the shins, that's okay too. Great job, everyone. I hope you feel stronger with these exercises. Coming up, I'll be answering our viewers' burning questions. Stay with us. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. Our Start Today community is unbelievable. I am so proud of everyone that's involved at every step of the journey. So many questions come up as we reach our health and wellness goals, and I thought I'd answer a few today. First up, our viewer Heather sent in a question. With the weather change, how can we change our walks to still walk every day in a safe way? Well, Heather, that's a great question, and I'm a huge fan of using your environment to help you reach your fitness goals. So if you want, bundle up, put on layers, add on your hat, mittens, scarves, and go outside for your walk, but maybe keep it shorter than you would on the warmer days. Or you can plan out your week, look at the weather, and go for short walks or longer walks when the weather's warmer, and then take your workout inside when it's just too cold outside. You can simply walk in place, or you can do some strength training at home. Another community member, Lisa, asked, If you get sidelined by an injury and can't walk, how can you get your cardio in? All right, well, we're gonna do some punches, also overhead presses, and some arm circles. All of these options are forms of upper body cardio. So they're gonna get your heart rate up without you even having to move your legs or walk. You can do these seated if you want as well. Now, because the arms have smaller muscles in them than your legs, they are going to tire more quickly, but I would recommend doing 30 seconds on and then 30 seconds off for 10 minutes. Next, Lisa asked, how do I stretch properly before and after exercising? So to stretch before exercising, I recommend dynamic stretching. So I'm gonna show you a dynamic stretch for the hip flexors. Before walking, you wanna mimic the motion that you're gonna be doing. So we're moving forward and then coming back to center to stretch that hip flexor. Another stretch that you can do before walking is butt kicks to stretch out those quads because we're using the quads to walk. Now, after your workout or after your walk, you wanna hold the stretch. This is called static stretching. We've already worn warmed up, we've loosened up the muscles, and now we are soothing the muscles and relaxing them. Similarly, you can hold that lunge for 10 to 20 seconds after your workout or after your walk to feel that stretch. Another viewer, Tisha, asked, if someone has knee pain, how do they go about healing from that in order to start walking regularly? Do this one exercise if you have knee pain. I want you to point your leg forward and squeeze your quad to pull your kneecap up and in proper alignment. Then slowly lift the leg up and lower it down, engaging the quad and primarily working the lower part of the quad which helps to keep the kneecap stabilized. You can do this in the morning right when you get out of bed. Just stand up out of bed, place your hand on the nightstand or on the dresser, or place your hands on your hips. 10 on each side. And lastly, Ashley sent in a question. I work at a hospital, so I'm always tempted by treats, candy, you name it. Suppliers give us food. Providers give us food, and of course the patients give us food, and we can't turn that down. How do I avoid these temptations? Please help. Well, Ashley, instead of hearing those sweets calling your name, the candy and everything when you're walking by, I want you to hear me in your ear saying protein, protein, protein. Protein is the key to help keep sugar cravings at bay. So you wanna make sure that you're eating protein with every meal and snack. And I'd recommend that you set an alarm so that you're eating protein every three to four hours. Set your alarm for nine for breakfast, 12.30 for lunch, four for a snack and seven o'clock for dinner. 
We accomplished so much today. From Karen's transformation to Vanessa's tips and all of the great viewer questions, it looks like we have all we need to start today in the best way. We hope you'll join us next time on Start Today. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to show us how to turn an easy sheet pan recipe into the ultimate reboot bowl. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, Joy. Good morning, guys. Lindsay, it's so nice to be here with you. you the too. last time we were together, I think we were having a vegetarian feast oh, in Connecticut, yes. right? We were at the right. tavern. That's, That's right. right. Yep. That's right. So I'm going to show you how to transform the easiest one sheet recipe into an energizing reboot bowl that has literally layers and layers of yummy goodness. But the best part, it is very, very simple to put together. So I'm gonna start with the sheet, rest, the sheet pan recipe. Here I have three heaping cups of broccoli. So the, the, the big uh, theme here is gonna be lots of plants. This is three heaping cups of uh, sweet potato that I cubed, or you can ap absolutely use any kind of acorn or winter squash as well. And now I have more cruciferous vegetables, so loads of fiber, and that is our cauliflorets. Now I have one can of rinsed and drained, and very important, it's padded dry chickpeas because I'm adding in a lot of fiber and some protein now. A little bit of olive oil. I have about two to three tablespoons in here because I want all the seasonings to stick. Now, I like to over season. So I'm going to put in, th uh, this is two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of onion powder. And I had some fresh rosemary in my fridge. So I chopped up and I have about two tablespoons here. But it's eater's choice. You can put in whatever herbs that you want. And you're just going to mix this up mm -hmm. to evenly distribute everything. You pour it onto your sheet pan. I mist it with a little bit of olive oil spray. And then I just put this. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I, I forgot about my salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. But it goes in the oven, set at 425 on the middle rack, just for about 30 to 35 minutes. And I flip it halfway through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you are going to get these gorgeous char marks. Look at this. Oh. This just came out of the oven. Do you, can you see great. this? Let that me say. Nice. So when you're building the yeah. bowl, Joy, what layer goes first? Okay. So now for the fun part. And you are the boss of your bowl because there's so many different directions that you can customize this bowl. So here's my bowl. Mm -hmm. And the first layer is going to be dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So it could be spinach, kale. It could be any lettuce that you want. Oh. The next is going to be a heaping mound of those delicious caramelized, addictive veggies mm. that we roasted. Mm. Then a little bit of fruit. So I'm oh. using a pear because I don't think pear gets enough love, guys. And it actually has a little bit more fiber than apples. Oh, but you can that. also use an apple. Mm -hmm. You could also use pomegranate seeds or um, even uh, dried cranberries right. or cherries. Anything goes. And then the protein is your choice. So ah. I put out a question on Instagram earlier this morning and I asked my followers, what should I put on? Lentils, salmon, black beans, shrimp. I have chicken. I have tofu. I'm going to tell you the tofu came in last place. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and go for the salmon this time. And last but not least, we have this mellow. Her the salmon to put in the leafy bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a mellow but mouth-watering tahini dressing that I'm going to show you how to make because everybody needs this. We're not going to have time We're going to put that. that on the website. We'll put it on the website. But okay, thank you, you so much. It. That looks fantastic. Look, All right. Look at this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a drizzle Beauty. because you got to oh, see this. Drizzle. And for this recipe, <laughs> head to today.com. <laughs> right. today. today, nutritionist Joy Bowers here joining us with a corn chowder and a spiced chai tea. Mm, Good let's morning, start cooking. Joy. Good morning. Oh, my people. Hey, guys. So today is all about warming the bones with okay. healthy foods and beverages. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to make is, like you mentioned, a cozy, creamy corn chowder. And I'm telling you, this is scrumptiously slurpable. Mm. I'm going to take you over to my stove. Okay. So 
Here, um, I have what I'm calling my nutrition confetti. All I've done is I sauteed some carrots, celery, and onions. It kind of looks like confetti, doesn't Carrot, it? Celery, onions, okay. okay. Um, and, and now we build the soup. It's as easy as that. Because corn is not in season, I'm taking advantage of canned corn, actually for a few reasons. One is because I get to use it. You notice I didn't drain it. The juice, I, yeah. I'm using the flavorful broth that normally oh. we just discard. Mm -hmm. I'm putting two cans in there. Then I'm putting in a full um, four cups of either a vegetable broth or a chicken broth. What did and you use there? I would, I'm using, uh, this is a chicken broth, and I'm using a reduced sodium because I'm controlling the salt. Okay. So there we have that. And then just a little bit of cayenne because it really does give it a pop of flavor. Okay. And then last, one pound of small red potatoes. I leave the skin on for extra fiber. And um, I cut them up into bite-sized pieces right. because I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to simmer it for about 15 minutes just until those potatoes get fork tender. Okay. I'm going to put this over here, and then the fun begins. I want a lot of body in this soup, so I use an immersion blender. But you can also do this in um, small batches in either a food processor or that, a regular yeah. blender. Okay. And see what I'm doing there? I'm just yeah. blending it so they get a lot of richness and body within that soup. And if anybody doesn't have a blender right. or an immersion blender, you can leave it chunky. It's totally mm. okay. It's so good. now, yeah, it's really good. You could stop right there, but right. we're not going to stop. Oh, right. no, so then not. to finish it off, more no texture, corn. I'm mm -hmm. adding in drained corn. So this time it's two cans of drained mm -hmm. corn. Because I saw all these and, like, whole corn kernels in there. I was wondering when Yes. And before I actually pureed the whole thing, mm -hmm. I like to reserve some of the potatoes, so again, for a little bit of texture and, mm -hmm. like, surprises as you slurp through. That's really good. And yeah. a dash of salt, and it makes a great big batch. And I like to Very garnish simple. it with this a little really bit terrific. of dill. It's really good, Joy. How about the tea, Joy? Yeah, we'll try that. that. The chai tea. This is fantastic. The chai tea. So here we go. I put mm. four cups of water in here. I love chai because my kitchen smells so unbelievably right now. It really infuses it with such aroma. And in the four cups of water, my combination is some cinnamon sticks, ginger, a little bit of nutmeg, fennel, peppercorns, oh. cloves, and cardamom. Okay. And I give you a recipe for a balanced base, but really you could ramp up any of these spices if you like a stronger flavor. And so a as those were um, uh, simmering in here for about 15 minutes, then you put in your tea. So I have four tea bags that I added in. They've been in here for just about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Stick this over here. And now we build it. I add in three to four cups of a milk. Truth be told, I tried this with an almond milk, and it came out a little bit too thin, so I'm yeah. using a 2% reduced fat. Okay. And Maybe an oat a milk. Little I was going to ask you about oat milk, yeah. Oat milk would be fabulous. And this is a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of honey. And then I'm going to bring mm. you over mm. to my finished product. Come back with me okay. over here. I'm and sure it smells good, here, yeah. You can't I oh, strain it through a colander, <laughs> and here's the cool part. I feel like if you're going to be putting in so much effort, because it's much more involved than just steeping regular tea, mm -hmm. I make a great big batch, and then I stash it in the fridge, and whenever a craving calls, I just warm it in the microwave, Very and you nice. have about seven cups. All right, Joy. Well, thank you much. We're, we are ready for the weekend. I know, thank cozy. You. Yummy, yummy, it. yummy. Thank you, Joy. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Joy Bauer is upgrading our lunchtime with two, not one, but two tasty sandwiches that she makes in a skillet. Hey, good morning, Joy. Good hey, joy. joy. Hey, good morning, guys. I think I'm about to become your new favorite lunch lady because we are <laughs> seriously creating next level sandwiches. And like you said, in the skillet. So the first sandwich is a fun spin on a traditional and beloved PB&J. Mm -hmm. But I'm calling this one a grilled PB and fruit. So here I have hearty, seedy, whole grain bread. We're actually making two because I want to show you the versatility of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I just put a tablespoon of peanut butter on all of the slices. So you want this peanut butter going on the bottom slice and the top slice. And then you become the Picasso of your decor, mm -hmm. right? So I have all this fruit over here. The cool thing is when you don't use sugary jam and you use the whole fruit, you're getting a lot of texture, you're getting a lot of hardiness, and you're getting the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants that the fruit brings to the table. Um, you could stick with one fruit. A lot of people just like PB and bananas, oh, yeah. or you could yep. do what I've done. And when you see the great over here, I did slice them in half. I just want to show you because mm -hmm. otherwise they would be they a little around. bit too bulky. <laughs> exactly. So then what you do, I'll show you on one. You take your top slice mm -hmm. and you put it over your Sammy and you take olive oil spray and give it a nice liberal spray okay. on both Instead sides. Instead of butter. Instead of butter, exactly. And this goes in the skillet just for one minute on either side. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you can't believe how easy it is. Oh, wow. Jill, what I happens happens you is... could do this. <laughs> and Joy, by the way, the production values, camera's moving, you got an overhead camera. It's uh, uh, unbelievable. He's never coming back to the studio that, to bring us any of this food. That Ian Bauer <laughs> is a superstar husband and photographer. Yeah. <laughs> Now, and I keep saying, like, he needs a, a, a like, a what, what would we call it, a, a COVID Emmy or something like that. He has learned how to do all of this. Well, High I'm, five for I'm Ian sending for him sure. that. And I think you need an Emmy, too, because you're actually going to show us how to make a sandwich that I never thought you can make healthier, a Monte Cristo. Mm. Oh, my goodness. This has so many layers of scrumptiousness. So... <laughs> What I'm starting with here, so these, this is whole grain bread also, but for mm. this one, because it has a French toast melt in your mouth feel, mm -hmm. you want a softer bread. So it's a whole grain softer bread. I put mm. Dijon mustard on one slice and let the layering begin. So we have here, I'm using ham because that's classic, but truth be told, you I don't love ham. Out. <laughs> I had some extra here. Now, normally... They top the French toast with some powdered sugar. So instead, for a little sweet something, I put in a crisp Fuji apple. Mm. Then we have our Swiss cheese on top. Take the second piece of bread. So but because we're melting. making French toast, we have here an egg mixed with a little bit of vanilla extract oh, whoa. and a dash of milk. That looks this really. And how long does that go into the, the griddle? Skillet. About four minutes, I'm going to grab it. About four minutes on each side, and you cannot Whoa. believe this that is just yummy. like a masterpiece. Let me see if I can get a close-up. Yeah, I'm going to grab through the screen, that, Joy. That is fantastic, <laughs> Joy. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And for you these recipes it. and more, head to today.com slash food. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is ripping up a barbecue salmon mm. bowl packed with flavor and nutrients. Good morning to you. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. So nice to see you. You too. too. Well, before we dig in here, can you talk about some good superfoods that all of us can incorporate um, into our diets? Definitely. So I put together a list of five superfoods. I mean, these are some of the best of the best foods that everyone should be eating, but I specifically designed this list for women. And the okay. first one is spinach. Spinach is basically nature's multivitamin. When I tell you it has countless, countless vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. But interestingly enough, it has a unique combination of two potent antioxidants called lutein and zeaxanthin that help to promote sharp vision. And also, it's a great source of plant-based iron, which helps us to maintain our energy levels. The next on the list is salmon. I mean, this tops every single list. It has a lot of high quality protein. It also has all the essential amino acids. So that means it helps us to maintain our muscle mass. And as we get older, it keeps our metabolism revved. But of course, salmon is world famous for its omega-3 fats. And omega-3 fats are super important because first, they tame inflammation in the body. They also support heart health. They help to drive down triglycerides and they manage blood pressure. But they also help to regulate your mood. And one other thing I'm going to say about salmon, I could talk about salmon all day. But we don't, we don't have all day, Joyce. <laughs> we got we to gotta move on here. So how are we going to start combining all these things? Well, three other foods we have are beans, we have for skin health, our tomatoes, and last but not least, I'm touting almonds. All, almond, all nuts are winners, but almonds have the added bonus of calcium. So okay. I'm going to take all of these foods and we're going to turn it into kind of like a boss lady bowl. This is okay. a barbecue salmon bowl that has everything. Why are so you throwing started... this all together, Joy? I still want to know what you were going to say about salmon. <laughs> Salmon has vitamin D, and vitamin okay. D helps to keep our immune system strong. There you go. And okay. also helps with bones, healthy bones and teeth. So okay. here we have all of our spinach, and I chopped this spinach up because it works better in the bowl. Okay. And now we take our award-winning salmon. That salmon, and this salmon is, a little, is delicious. Is it just salt and, and pepper this, on there? Salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil, that's mm -hmm. it. And you mash it right up. It's the easiest thing. And you could do this with leftover salmon as well. So you already know that this bowl is packed with the good stuff. Now I'm adding in my beans. Before, what I was going to say about beans, they have a great combination of plant-based protein and fiber, which steadies your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Now we have our tomatoes. Tomatoes have lycopene and vitamin C, which protects our skin from the sun's harmful rays. This is just some extras because we want to make this bowl extra delicious. We've got some corn, Colorful super healthy. Too. Look at the um, the pop of color from the red onion. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, actually, I'm going to squeeze on a little bit of lime juice. Mm -hmm. And you could add a little bit of cumin or salt and pepper if you want. And here comes the barbecue sauce because this is a Wait, we're barbecue, allowed to have barbecue salmon sauce? bowl. You can. And there's a lot of great brands that are lower in sugar, but you're only using about two to three tablespoons. Okay. And this is instead of dressing. Now, it's almost complete, but there was one last superfood that I touted, and that the was almonds? the almonds. Mm. So I'm going to add in mm. a sprinkle of almonds for some crunch. crunch. And I love, whoops, I love scallions. And guys, this is a boss so And that's one serving? It's no. <laughs> one Serving. No, no it's it one is. serving. That's one and serving. It's packed with oh, protein we thought you were just... and fiber. That's amazing. Yeah, no, guys. Wow. I'll fill you up for a I while. Mean, 
Yeah. This is uh, really yeah. good stuff. Joy Bauer is here with two dinner recipes. That, that Joy, they, we're just using one pan, right? One pan. It's Forget officially about all those bowls. She no, she pan <laughs> superfood Friday. And again, it is, there's so much to love about these recipes because like you said, Craig, they're easy to make, they're packed with nutrition and they're totally delicious. And we're starting with what I'm calling a sheet pan harissa salmon with vegetables. And step one is to roast those vegetables. So in the spirit of convenience, I'm using baby carrots. They're already cut and washed for you. And here, some cauliflower mm. florets, nice. a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of salt and pepper and that's it now i'm gonna mix this up i preset the oven for 450 these are hearty vegetables and i'm gonna lay them out on my baking sheet in a single file and Joy, how do you make sure you don't burn the vegetables when you're roasting at such high heat so i definitely keep a watch on them but for these i put them in for about 25 minutes and i like to make sure that the carrots are fork tender again mm -hmm. they're hearty so they take a little bit of a little bit in that oven on high mm -hmm. heat and i like that cauliflower to get oh, charred oh, and slightly so burnt good. on top it's like melt in your mm -hmm. mouth it makes you scream for another bite now <laughs> while these are in the oven we're gonna do the magic sauce so what happens here is in a bowl i mix Harissa is a chili paste. It's from, it's Middle Eastern and it's North African and it has olive oil and a whole lot of warm, wonderful spices. I added some sweet citrus orange juice to sort of make it pop and a little bit of ground ginger. And I just mix this up. And again, guys, this is while the veggies are roasting in the oven. Now you take your salmon fillets and upside down, if you do have the skin on, you just sort of dunk it in, submerge it in that bowl and let them sit and marinate and soak up all the mm. yummy sauce while the veggies are in. Then when the veggies come out, you nestle the salmon nestle. slices, mm. uh, nestle this in between delicious. the veggies, yeah. right? And you wanna make sure that they're touching the heated pan. So get all four of those fillets in. Whoops, I did that upside down, Joy. I was gonna say, <laughs> wait, which way are we putting? All right, so skin side no. down. Skin side down, or you could also buy fillets that don't have the skin, whichever mm -hmm. you prefer. Oh, and then the remaining sauce goes on top. And then this goes back in the oven again on 450. Keep the heat going for just 10 minutes. Ooh. And then you put some herbs on top and you got that yourself a party. That's wow. all there is to it. Now you got a cheesy one it. for us, right? Okay. So now we're going to change directions, guys. We are making a sheet pan baked feta, sausage, and veggies. I needed mm. to jump on this trend. Everybody's talking about the baked feta yes. now. And this time I'm using very different vegetables. So these kind of scream summer. I have beautiful, vibrant tomatoes. I have sweet kernels of corn. I use canned corn. Mm -hmm. It works with frozen too. But if corn. you have fresh corn, of course. And we have some uh, zucchini, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This time I'm adding in ground cumin and some crushed red pepper flakes some lime slices and a little bit of salt. So this also will get all stirred up. It's gonna go on your baking sheet. This goes in the oven. These are a little bit more delicate, these vegetables. So the oven is set at 425 just for 20 minutes. Then you take it out and you're gonna put in pre-cooked sliced poultry sausage. Again, nestle it right in <laughs> with the vegetables and then sticks of feta. You're going to, mm. there, there goes my sausage. And there's all types of pre-cooked varieties at the market. Mm -hmm. And I buy the block feta, cut it into strips. It never melts no. in the oven, but it sort of becomes softer and spreadable. Mm. And guys, I'm telling you, you take this out, you give it a squeeze with fresh lime juice oh, and some fantastic. herbs. And if you could get a bite with all three, the feta, the vegetables, and mm. the sausage, oh, no. that you looks are amazing. Mm. Well, you know, Joy, halloumi so cheese we're... would be probably great with that, too. Mm. Wow, wow that would be super. You know, it's, a, it's a Greek grilling cheese. Oh. So Joy, be... thank you. Joy, that was awesome. You thank you it. so much. Have a great weekend, Joy. Oh, I want all Bye -bye, of that. Guys. Folks, for those recipes, it's very simple. Today.com slash food. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now.
Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our good pal today, nutritionist Joy Bauer, back with two easy, delicious ways to dress up a simple piece of toast. Mm. Mm. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, I am toasting a healthier 2021 with two scrumptious spins on toast. First, an addictive chocolate peanut butter spread. The secret ingredient is this peanut powder. And you can find this in uh, the grocery store or you could order it online. And it is packed with protein. Next, cocoa powder, which is filled with brain-boosting flavonoids some sugar, and a pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna add six to eight tablespoons of water. And this is going to mix together to create the creamiest, dreamiest chocolate peanut butter spread. Just keep stirring and look at this, guys. It transforms into a delicious, lick the spoon, addictive spread. And now we are ready to build our toast. Putting a nice, generous amount of my chocolate peanut butter spread right on the toast. I'm gonna top it with potassium packed bananas. And really, you could put whatever fruit you want on top. And of course, the bananas have potassium, they have fiber. And on this slice, I'm also gonna add some vitamin C rich strawberries for extra flavor and extra nutrition. And the best part, guys, there is so much chocolate peanut butter sauce left over for dipping. <laughs> And now for some savory satisfaction, caprese toast. It's a classic combo that is completely customizable. And I'm starting with the bottom base of mashed avocado. And avocado is great because it's loaded with heart healthy fat, it's got potassium, and it's got a lot of fiber too. So I'm just mashing this down as our first layer. And you probably know what comes next. Lycopene rich tomatoes. They also have vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. And I'm putting on mozzarella, which adds some calcium. And last but not least, just some torn basil leaves, which makes the kitchen smell so good. This is one layered tower of deliciousness. But one more thing. I like to drizzle on a balsamic glaze right over the top. And if you can't find balsamic glaze, you could also take regular balsamic vinegar and you can reduce it in a small saucepan over a low heat for about 10, 20 minutes and it will thicken right up. And that's what I call a toast to a healthy 2021. Mm. Welcome to today all day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever played? Oh, the right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, oh, oh. now. How wow. good do they look? 
I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. We received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. This was our biggest problem on the show. It, it, Backwards walking. Jenna? Yes? It's Jerry. Oh, Jerry, hi. Hi. Remember we said we were going to have coffee today? Oh, gosh. Am I late? What do you think? Okay, okay I'm on my way right now. Oh. I am late. I'll be right there. Fantastic. Oh, lucky who's here. Hey. Hi. How are you? How are you? Don't hit your head. Mwah. Nice to see you. Thank you for meeting me for a little. Coffee? You're really overdressed for just coffee. <laughs> well, you know what? You I came straight elegant. from the show. Oh. But also, I knew there'd be pickles involved. Hi. OK. Um, sure, I'd love a coffee. Me too. I'd love a coffee. OK, okay great. OK, great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. you so did... have you had a coffee already this morning? I've, I've had um, three coffees. How many have you had? I've had one espresso. Every day starts with espresso. But it didn't always used it to. It didn't always. For years. I used to do jokes about it. Oh, I thought. Coffee people were so weird. What is this drink you have to drink? Why? I can't talk until I've had my coffee. Why? Because <laughs> well, I just got up. Yeah? <laughs> I feel tired when I get up. Yeah, we all do. So, OK, you didn't drink coffee, and yet you pitched a show. That well, I was drinking it at that point. That's, oh. what, that's where I got the idea for the show. I went, this is a fantastic drink. It gets people so chatty. This is great. Now, there's something that's, that must be open-minded about you, because to, to go from a no-coffee person to a coffee person takes, you know, I feel like most people stick in one lane. Yeah, I think I am pretty open-minded. I have done a lot of very weird, different things. <laughs> I have explored a lot of avenues in my journey to uh, perfect the human system. And have you perfected it? Pretty close. You look perfect. You look great. No, I, I feel like uh, I'm 68, and uh, I feel pretty good. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of Jerry Seinfeld's hit show, Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee, he's releasing the Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee book, which takes readers behind the scenes of some of the most iconic episodes. Let's talk about this show and this book. I heard okay. that the most nervous you were, which kind of makes sense was when you went to interview President Obama at the White House. Right. Your I producer said you were a little scared. Yeah. Well, I felt like I was kind of representing every comedian that ever lived. Yes. And I was getting to do something that no comedian has ever done, which is do a little funny bit yeah. in the Oval Office. Yes. Which I don't think anyone's ever done. Did Dana Carvey never do that? Not in the real yeah. Oval Office. Yes. I don't think so. But it was a bit, you know, knocking on the window. Yes. And uh, sitting on the chair. And I heard that the Secret Service were the ones that told you to go knock on the window. I mean, you were behind the bushes and knocked on the window. No, I knew I was going to knock on the window. I asked them. Is that They okay? said, could I? Do, I asked, I don't remember whose idea it yeah. was, but they said, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Or, Which you, I couldn't believe they were going to let I me know. do that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And I thought, this is a great opportunity in the history of comedy, you know, yes. to knock on the window of the Oval Office while the president's Thank working. Thank you. And also, there's lots of Secret Service yeah. that are hanging out there. Yeah. So it was a kind of a risk to your, to, to your safety. Right? Why? Why would I be scared? Well, what if of them? one Secret Service man didn't know that Jerry Seinfeld was popping up behind the bushes knocking? I, I, I trust the Secret Service. This show, as you said, is kind of like a Valentine. Yes. Like a funny Valentine to yes. comedians. Yes. Why? You know, let me let me tell you what it, what it's like to be a comedian. Okay. It's a, it's it's the greatest life if you can manage it. Yes. 
So the hard part is the comedian part. Yes. Making people laugh every night is hard. But if you have that, if you can do that, the, the rest of your life, you're with comedians. Yes. And this is, becomes a gigantic component of your life and is equally as enjoyable. <laughs> so I wanted people to see this other side. You know, I would say my life is 25% doing comedy. Yes. 75% hanging out with comedians. Hanging out with funny people. Yes. So you're constantly laughing. Yes. But I think, I guess what surprises surprises me about the show is that it is hilarious, which Thank people you. would expect, but it's also kind of human and mm -hmm. lovely and touching. There were moments where you want to kind of tear up, and I guess y'all are people, but that part, <laughs> that part surprised me. Well, we are people, but we're not normal people. We're, we're all, and what I have found is the gene is kind of the same, yeah. but it gets implanted in all these different types of people. But the essential gene, the comedy gene, is the same. And so it became a study of that or kind of an exploration of that. Look at all these different people that are all very different and they all have this little thing. Yeah. This little, uh, I don't want to call it a defect, but uh, <laughs> it's a, let's call it an aspect. An aspect of their yeah. personality. Yeah. Do you remember when you knew you had that? I didn't, that I thought I was funny, you mean? You knew you were funny. Because you're not just that you thought you well, were funny. Well, I thought everyone was funny. As a little kid. When you're eight, everyone is funny. No, but not everybody is funny. You know what I mean? You <laughs> can think back to, like, the kids that are not funny. Yeah, there were some, but there were a lot of funny kids. Yes, that's true. Kids are funny. Right? right? And then something, it's like thir between 13 and 15. Yes. Is when it gets, uh, slips away. Because the pressure. Yeah. Of, oh, I've got to be a person now. Yeah. And you're embarrassed, maybe. Yeah. Well, you, you... Girls can be. You, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Be yes. embarrassed by that by part being of being funny. By, well, being too big or something. Right. Too much personality. Did your friends think you were funny? Yeah. Do they still think you're funny? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they do. You, so like you're the funny one. I'm the funny one. That's great. But Barbara's pretty funny. If you yes, know my Barbara sister, is funny, she's yeah. funny, but right. I do like to make people laugh. I mean, what does it feel like to you to make people laugh? It's the best thing in the world. It's a, it's a couple of seconds of weightlessness mm -hmm. where everything in your mind, everything you think about and worry about and work on your whole life is just gone for a second. And, it's, and it lasts. You know, you feel, you know, if you have like a big laugh, yes. it lasts. You know, for the rest of the day you go, that was so funny. And it's you know. fun to see it in kids. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I have a child who, like, we actually think is going to be the next Amy Schumer. Oh, wow. She's very wild and hilarious and will do anything for a laugh. And when she gets an authentic one, like, to see that glimmer in their eye, to wow. see the glimmer. You know what I mean? There is something to it. Yeah. The trick is to not lose it. Yeah. You know, don't, don't dismiss it. I think people, people think, well, what, what use is this, you know? Yeah, I wonder, like, in a world that feels pretty dark, you know, I think we can all be like, gosh, what, what service are we unless we're doing more? Mm -hmm. But, and I kind of used to be self-deprecating about my job sitting next to Hoda, but I realized that I'm making people feel good. Yeah. And that that is of service in some way, in some small way. It's not a small way. It's not a small way. It's a big way. And do you feel that way, too? Do you feel like, you know what, actually <laughs> making people laugh is something that's super important? It is, yeah. I think I don't think of it kind of socially. I think of it in in the moment. Yeah. It's really important to me to get this laugh right now, because. Yeah. I don't know. You, you become um, you kind of become a machine in comedy. You just like all day, every day. You're thinking about how do I get that joke to work. Yeah. And. I don't. I, I have a, a friend that always talks to me about this. He always says it's not. It is a bigger thing. You are providing a right. relief. I always say the silly stuff we do. This, you know, it's it's meaningless. You know, he says no. It's extremely meaningful. So, it's a nice thought. Mm -hmm. 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. You get to sit with these hilarious people yes. and laugh, which I think making people laugh feels great, but also there's nothing better than laughing. So let's talk Steve Martin. <laughs> okay. I mean, first of all, the car, uh, you had some car issues. We've had a lot of car issues <laughs> over the history of doing the show. Yeah, because we want, I always, I love old cars. Yes. Especially interesting ones. And people think that they're maintaining them and they're not. <laughs> And we go, is this a good car? And they go, oh, yeah, I keep it perfect. And they don't. So with Steve, what happened there? You said there was some sort it, of... It broke down at some point. What was it? I believe it yeah, was it a Fiat... Yeah, it broke down on the side of the road. Yeah. Fiat. I believe it was a Fiat 8V, if I recall, which was a really artistic car that I thought he would like because he's such an art guy. Yes. Oh, Jerry, I know you're trying to be funny. Whoa. Now, what is she thinking, that lady? She's thinking, you know... I'm sure that's not Steve Martin and Jerry Seinfeld, but the resemblance is unbelievable. And were y'all able to fix it? Or you need somebody else no, for that? No, I remember we had to get in like a rent-a-car. <laughs> yeah. You and Steve and, and yeah. an old Buick. Yeah. And a Toyota Camry. Yeah, and a Camry was really makes you sad. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what you were hoping. No. Now, do you prepare, how do you prepare for these? Because it's I kind don't. of... You don't prepare at all? No. See, I'm more interested, like, uh, that first question I ask you is, you've had three coffees today. I like the tiny little behaviors of human life. Yes. What was the first one? Is it a routine? How do you make it? You know, I'm interested in coffee. I'm interested in, in people's beds and their shoes and their combs, you know. I, I like the, uh, small, the small things are the big things to me. Which makes total sense, right? Do yeah. you, now, do you make your bed? No, I do not. Does Jessica make your bed? Yes, she does. Of course she does. <laughs> of course she does. Why? Because I like Jessica. <laughs> she gets things done. Oh, she sure does. Right? Yeah. But aren't you lucky you married somebody like that and had children with somebody that gets everything done? Lucky is not the word. Saved is the word. I'm a rescue pet. <laughs> <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> this is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. I love riding the way down. The only way is 
This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So you don't prepare at all. You don't Google. Like, what if you don't know the person? You know everybody? I Google. I read the first three sentences. I just want to know where they grew up. Are they yeah. married? They have kids. Okay. That's all. I don't need to know anything else about a person to have a So Wikipedia is really your sort of... Yeah. Yeah. I. The things I'm interested in are not, in, you know, in the bio. Which makes the, the show so good. Oh, thanks. And the coffee table book. Did you ever think you'd have a coffee table book? No. Are you proud of it? I didn't. <laughs> well, they don't give you a book unless the show works. Yes. So, yes, I am proud of it. And the show worked, and people are asking, will there be more? They are. I don't know. I actually just started thinking about it just recently, but I did a movie, and I'm kind of... Uh, you did a movie? I made a movie, yeah, during the, uh, the virus. We wrote a movie, and then we made it. And now we're finishing it, and it's going to come out pretty soon. Wow, what does that feel like? Amazing. Yeah. That's something I never thought I would do. But because of the virus, I wasn't doing anything, and I had time to write it. Because otherwise, I, don't, I can't stop doing stand-up. I can't stop. It's too, too much fun. Yeah, it's just like, it's like my life <laughs> uh, routine. I have to, you know, it's you so much fun. So now the fact that there's going to be this film... Yeah. Can you tell me anything about it? Sure. Have you already talked about it and I just didn't do no, enough I research? No, I haven't. I haven't. What, what is it? Um, it's a, it takes place in 1964. Wow. So it's a period piece. Yes. It takes place in Battle Creek, Michigan. And it's um, about how they invented the Pop-Tart. Wow. <laughs> That's genius. Yeah. Do you like a Pop-Tart? I love the Pop-Tart. Which, which is your favorite flavor? Brown sugar cinnamon. Me too. Of course. Me too. But yeah. a lot of people like strawberry with the frosty. That's them. No, but brown sugar cinnamon. See, that was the probably the first. Is that the first thing you made when you were a kid that was hot? Yes. Yeah. Or maybe an Eggo waffle. But hot, right, yeah. that's the most luxurious thing. Like, because an Eggo waffle is just like toast, glorified yeah, toast. Right. A but Pop-Tart Pop is compl complicated. It has all that. Sometimes some of them have yeah. sprinkles. Mm -hmm. So is this a is this a real story or you? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so it there are certain real elements in it. Okay. The truth of the story is, Post and Kellogg's both had the idea at the same time. Wow. And then they competed to who could come out with it first. Yes. And then we just completely made up. Came up. It's totally insane. Comedy. It's like 15 stand-up comics are in this. Are you, are you starring in it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I directed it. That is incredible. I know. It's really exciting. Most people just learned how to, like, bake bread during the pandemic, and you yeah. wrote and directed and are going to star yeah. in a film. Yeah. Can we get coffee and talk about it when it comes out? Sure. And maybe bring Jessica. But I do want to ask you. you. Your wife posted something right. on Instagram. Right. I follow her. Right. I adore her. <laughs> um, I thought Thank you. it was a simple way to say something that needs to be said. In October, Jerry's wife of 23 years, Jessica, posted on Instagram in support of the Jewish faith after a string of highly publicized anti-Semitic events. The post read, I support my Jewish friends and the Jewish people. And the caption read, if you don't know what to say, you can just say this in your feed. When we look at the rise of anti-Semitism mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in this country and really around the world, mm -hmm. um, what, like, how, what, do you, what do you think of it? She found a simple, and I thought, non-aggressive yeah. way to say something that, as we said, unfortunately needs to be said, but does need to be said. And uh, I thought that was very uh, special and, and fantastic thing she did. Mm -hmm. Hard to do. It is hard right? to do. Well, simplicity. Most things in that venue, it's going to trigger someone. It's going to inflame. We're so quick for 
to inflame, right? Mm -hmm. Both sides of any debate, yes. women, uh, gender, ev everything, yeah. right? This is the culture we live in, flash paper. Yeah. Instant, violent yes. verbiage, yes. right? And she found a way to sort of quiet it. Right. And hopefully also raise awareness. Yeah, that was a great thing. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Okay, I want to go over a list of some of these comedians that were on. Okay. And just if you have something to say, okay. say it. Um, Eddie Murphy. I feel like Eddie Murphy was like, well, was maybe the best episode there ever was. That was probably next to the Obama one, which was unique for those circumstances, yes. obvious. But uh, reconnecting with Eddie, who he and I started together the same month, the same club together. And then, of course, he quickly went one way, and then I went another way. And. And then years, after all those years, to get back together was so thrilling. And he was so, again, you, I talk about this thing, yeah. you know, yes. and there it is. And he's still got it, you know, and he's still talking about it. And he talks about in the show being on Long Island and going to these clubs with these guys in a car. And then after the club, you go to a place like this. Oh my gosh. This is the life. This is the life. Hanging out with the company. You do the show, you do great, you do horrible, <laughs> but you wind up here. Having There's coffee a, and a pastrami sandwich. Yes, and, and writing jokes on napkins and making fun of each other. <laughs> You know, <laughs> did you ha do you have napkins where you have jokes? I mean, do you remember you yourself doing that coming to a, a no? Place? I got a notebook. Yeah, I, said, oh, I, notebook. I need a notebook for this work profession. I need yeah. a notebook for this type of work. <laughs> yeah, but you probably have. I'm sure you have written a joke or two down on a napkin. Yes, I have. To be reunited with him must have been very cool. It was. It was uh, beautiful. It was beautiful. And you could feel that. Oh, that's great. You could. So. You've seen a few of these. Yes, I've seen a few of yours. Oh, that's nice. People love the show. Wow. Did you not know that? I, for most of the time I was doing it, I didn't think it was working. You didn't think it while you were doing it? Yeah. But I loved it, and I wanted to make it. Yeah. I just wanted to make this. Well, I, I want to show people this side of comedy life, because people just got so interested in comedy yes. the past 20 yes. years, you know? Yes. So that's why I did it. I think also it's like, and why people are asking now is that that kind of connection, you know, that kind of being with somebody funny and making each other laugh, that kind of conversation, especially since y'all were together mm -hmm. in this small area, like mm -hmm. was something we, we missed during the pandemic, you know? Well, you tell me, don't you feel, I mean, you do more interviews than anyone. This kind of thing. Yeah. It's different, right? Yes. Because you're not, because just like you said, there is no preparation. Right. You're just sitting down for a wonderful conversation over right. coffee. Right. But also, I think, with the goal of 
laughing and having others laugh too. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lightness to that, right? Very much so. And I'm not really much of a podcast person because I like edited content. Yeah. I like, I love that I could take three hours and give you a great 12. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> that, that's Who what comedy it? is. Yes. When you go see a comedian, he's basically going, I have lots of crazy thoughts, some of them are funny, and I've cut it down to just that. Yes. That's what you're seeing. Because when you work on a show, you write something, H how long does it take like, to get down to what you're actually going to perform? Well, I don't know because I do it all the time. Yeah. But everything is trimmed down to the... An, an essential aspect of comedy is it has to be trimmed down to the absolute minimum. It's like a poem. Yes. It has to be like and a poem. And good books. Really good books are yeah. edited well. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the most important part, of, it, part yes. of all of it. Yeah, but books are long. I love books. That's nice. You don't? I do. I love books. But I don't read a lot. I'm trying to think if I have anything good if for If I can get rid of the phone... Yeah, yeah, I put the phone I, away. Put I the phone away. Read. What are you doing on your phone? Nothing good. Scrolling? Well, how else do you get to the next thing? But what, we have to scroll. But what are you, are you looking at articles? Or are you looking at social media? What, what are you doing? Are you I on look Instagram? At cars. I'm, I, I look on Instagram and I love YouTube. No, you don't. I love YouTube. What do you like on YouTube? Cat videos? Here's what I found the greatest video on YouTube <laughs> what is it? yesterday. Oh my God. I have spent years on YouTube, countless hours, and yesterday I found a video that changed my life so powerfully. A guy made a video about, you know how when you turn on your windshield wipers, sometimes they go, J -j 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 -j. Yes. He made a video about how to fix that. <laughs> how do you fix it? And you it? don't need new wipers. What, how do you? And you don't need a new wiper arm. It's an adjustment with two wrenches, and he shows you. Would you ever do that? Oh, I can't wait to do it. Are you going to do it? Yeah. So that's what I love. You love it. Because I hate when wipers do that. I hate that sound. I know what you and mean. And somebody solved it, and they made a video and, that, and, and showed everyone. How, how did to... you come to that YouTube video? I don't know. They, I like they targeted to... you. Yeah. You are, I YouTube. like the algorithm. I don't watch anything unless the algorithm suggests it. Well, you do. And they just targeted you with the yeah. perfect video, which is the windshield, windshield wipers. Windshield wiper adjustment. So you like that kind of like how to fix it. You're not into... No, I'm into... I'm into... I'm surfing. Oh, surfing. Baseball. Cars. Dogs. I like cute dog videos. Yeah, who doesn't? You know. You should follow round boys on Instagram. It's really good. It's just round animals. <laughs> Your wife would love it. Just all about the roundness of animals. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love things like I love unboxing videos. Unboxing videos. Here's what it is. I really think obsession is a nice way to go through life. Yeah. Being obsessive. Yes. As long as you don't go completely crazy. Yes. Obsessing. I've obsessed on everything about everything my entire well, life. Well, that's true. That's why you're famous, right? Because the the show is like uh, it's obsessing all... over the little nuance exactly. of life. Right. Yes. So that's entertainment to me. Yeah. Well, it's entertainment to us too. Yeah. Turns out. Turns out it's entertainment <laughs> to all of us as well. Yeah, but we all live these lives of uh, micro obsession, yes. right? Not micro aggression. Micro, micro obsession. obsession. Okay, I've learned so much. And those things, I think, are if you miss out on the fun of that. Yes. I just think it's fun. It's a fun... I, I like to find entertainment in life. Yes. I don't want to just drag myself through this. I want to enjoy it. Yes. No, it's so true. If you can't find the fun and the nuance and the tediousness of life, then you're not living. What was the point of yeah. all of that? Yeah, it's true. Right? It's true. Find the fun in it. And I personally believe the fun is in the ordinary. Mm -hmm. sure not is. in the special. Mm -hmm. The ordinary. I love right? this so much. I know, me too. I, I could okay. sit here forever. Me too. Cheers. Well, cheers. But can we do it when your movie comes out? Yes. Isn't it better? It's well the Pop Tarts, I can't wait.
Hi there, and welcome to Start Today, a place where we hope to inspire and educate you no matter where you are in your health and fitness journey. I'm today's fitness contributor, Stephanie Mansour. In our Start Today community, we've united more than 100,000 members, all with a collective mission to better themselves. Today, we'll build on what we've started. We're focusing on how to maintain a well-balanced diet. And I'm going to show you a core workout you can do at home. Plus, I'll be answering some piping hot viewer questions. We start with an incredible transformation. One of the most rewarding parts of leading our Start Today community is hearing the success stories. I recently sat down with Tammy Scove, who told me about her journey, and I think you'll enjoy her as much as I did. Take a look. So can you take us back to like before you found, you know, the Start Today program with the Today Show and um, like where you were at? Cause, Cause you were always walking. I was always walking and you know, I feel like I, I can relate to a lot of people. I've been, a, I've been the mom of kids, and sports and activities, did all of that. I was the uh, caregiver for my mom for many years. And there was just a lot of time when I couldn't, I just couldn't do anything because I just didn't yeah. have time. And plus I was working. Yeah. So I feel like I can relate to a lot of people that may be in the same boat right now mm -hmm. that eventually things will open up and you'll be able to have that time to yourself. And COVID really got me walking because I needed to get out of the house. <laughs> I was working from home. I'm like, I just need to get out. And I just started walking a little bit further and a little bit further each day. Mm -hmm. And um, when I saw the um, start today, when Al was talking about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm walking anyhow. I might as well yeah. join. And that's yeah. what brought me to this, this wonderful group. So in terms of um, the walking, like in your overall health, so, right. so has walking, like I know you said you started walking in the pandemic more, how has that helped other areas of, of your life too? You know, like food, sleep, mood, energy, um, you know, attitudes about health, weight, body image, you know, yeah. can, you, can you tell me like how that affected other areas? Yeah, um, well, it definitely calms me down. Mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a de-stressor for me. Yeah. You know, once I get logged into work, you know, yeah. I'm an administrative assistant and I never know what my day is going to be like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's a nice way to, to, to take away some of the stress. Uh -huh. I remember a time when I couldn't walk up my steps without getting winded. Uh huh. And now it's like, that's not a problem. I did that. I did the 10 mile cancer walk the other day. Right. I would have never been yes. able. To, yeah. I would have never been able to do that years ago. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would you have done, um, the Cancer Rock, by the way, congratulations, 10 miles, which is which is huge. Yeah, for a yeah. Yes, would, would you just have not um, signed up or not? Because, I mean, you were doing it with your fr with one of your friends to support right. another one, right? Yeah, yeah. I would have never done it before. Yeah. I have never done it before. And then the friend that I did it with, we signed up. And this is before I really started walking a lot. Uh -huh. And we signed up. And then like literally the night before, I'm like, I just signed up for 10 miles. <laughs> you know? But we did it. And yes. um, we we just talked and chatted the whole time. Is the walking inspiring you in other areas? Yeah. It, as I started seeing that my body changing, mm -hmm. you know, I, I did start doing the exercises. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I, um, I have weights here in the room. So yeah. that I I'm between meetings, I can do the weights. And yeah. I got to say, the, the one thing I love that you did when uh, when I came up to New York, when yeah. you, the serve the platter. Yes, yes. <laughs> that one, because it's like, when you go to a gym and they're talking to you and all of these terms, you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. But to put it in a term like that, where people can relate, yeah. You know, that really that really spoke to me. And that's the one thing I love about what you do is that you make it achievable for all people, all types right. of people. So I think like kind of the lesson here for people too is like you start with the walking. Like just do the walking, you know? Yeah. And then see see what else you feel like you might want to add into the mix or what else you might have the confidence in your body to say yes right. to. Like the 10K walk, like the workout with your Sunday, you know? So I think that um, for people that are like, oh gosh, I'm never gonna get there. Like, what do you what do you have to say to them about? Well, I, I'm only walking my mailbox. Like, I'm never gonna be able to go to the gym with my kid or you yeah. know, pick up a dumbbell. You know, do you have anything to say to those yeah. people? 
I guess it's just, it's not going to happen overnight. I, these are things I would have never been doing five years ago. Honestly, yeah. I would not have been, but the, the more I walked, the stronger I got. Yeah. You know, the gym came in, the, you know, the exercises and the weights, uh-huh. um, the diet. I mean, I do like to eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I really don't diet, but I have added more, you know, fruits and vegetables. Right. Into my diet. Yeah. Um, which has helped a lot. Yeah. You know, cooking my own things, trying not to go the fast food route as uh-huh. much because it was easy, you yeah. know? And so those are the changes that I made. Do you have an intention on your walk? Like, I'm, I'm open to whatever I may come across. Like, what is your attitude before you walk out the door? I know you don't pre-plan, no. you know, but like, what's your like kind of energy or, or intent? Yeah, I think that's kind of like my, my life. Okay. <laughs> I, I just kind of jump in, you know, yeah. and yeah. whatever happens. And I mentioned about the lady named Betty that, uh-huh. that, you know, and years ago I wasn't walking and uh-huh. now I'm meeting all kinds of people and cause we kind of see each other around the same time. Mm-hmm. And I walked with Betty for probably about, you know, two or three blocks until we split off. Yeah. It, it's just amazing. You know, she was almost 80 years old. You know, and just seeing people that are out there, you know, active and just just enjoying life, mm-hmm. it's it's amazing. So, what would you say to people that don't know where to start? Like, where to start thinking? Where to start maybe praying? Or where to start, yeah. you know, going in their mind with the walk? Um, I would just, I would say, just maybe go someplace different. Go to, you know, go to a park, go, go to another town. I mean, there's a lot of really small towns around. Mm -hmm. Just go to another place. It gives you a whole new change of scenery. And, you know, you're seeing things that you haven't seen before. And, and that may be some inspiration, you know? Yeah. 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 Takes you out of your own life and your own mind. And you have to pay attention to what's going on because you're, you've never seen it before. Exactly. Tammy's journey is so inspiring. I can't wait to see what's to come for her. Coming up, we'll be back with four tips for a well-balanced diet that you won't want to miss. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You'll get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Welcome back. Joining us now is registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto. She's here to share a few tips for a well-balanced diet, no matter how busy the week may get. Now, Vanessa, you've got four ways that we can easily eat in a more healthful way, right? Yeah. Okay, what's the first one here? So, think of your freezer as a pantry. I think a lot of times people are just super overwhelmed. They have all this food, but they don't know how to put it together. And then they open up their refrigerator or their freezer, and they're like, there's no food. Right. Except there is a lot of food here. So, for example, we have have frozen fruit, Uh you can easily add flaxseed and yogurt and almond milk and make a smoothie, right? right? Rice doesn't have to be boiled on the stove, right? You can make- It's very annoying to boil rice on the stove. Minute rice, right? (laughs) How about vegetables? You don't Uh have to roast the vegetables with, you know, crushed red pepper flakes and shaved Parmesan, although that's really lovely. Or cut them up from the fridge. That's right. You can easily just put this in the microwave, Mm -hmm. or actually you can put it on a pan if you'd like, but it's already prepped for you. They're allowed to ripen to their peak and then flash Uh frozen so they're minimally, minimally processed 
so you okay. don't have to worry too much. Okay. Also, pizza night. You can yeah. put pizza on a Wednesday if you uh -huh. want, right? Just have some frozen pizza crust here and you can get going that yeah. way. So this is a real, really easy way to utilize what's in the freezer. Yes, I love that. And you know, one tip that I give our members is when they're making their smoothies, use the frozen fruit because that way you don't have to add ice, which can sometimes water it down, cause it to be less flavorful. That's so right. I love having the frozen fruit option. Yep. And if your fresh produce is going bad, right. put it in the freezer. Yes. Oh. And then, then you can use it for your smoothies right. later. Great tip. Yeah. All right. What's next here? So everybody wants flavor in their food, but they yes. don't want to do the diligence of chopping up the onions mm -hmm. and the peppers, et cetera. Right. So here we've already done that. Okay. I have a little extra garlic here that I'll put on top mm -hmm. and then you can just keep it in the fridge and as needed, scoop it out. You're also welcome to put it in perfectly portioned bags. Okay. Like pre-portioned in the freezer so that they last longer yeah. and then you just whip them out when you need them. I love this. So you can do this all at once, but use it for multiple That's meals. Right. You know, I actually wear glasses, like sunglasses, when I chop onions because I start tearing up and crying. Is that a thing? Yeah, I tear up and cry too, but okay. I have done the diligence and I'm going to maybe send these to you as a gift. Okay. There are glasses that have like some foam around <gasps> and they keep them really secure wow. so that you don't cry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna upgrade you stuff. Okay, thank you. Yes. I would love to step it up with my onion glasses <laughs> yes, here. for sure, for sure. So the canned, canned goods. Right, so like your pantry is actually a yes. pantry. Let's use the things that are inside, uh -huh. right? So your beans aren't just boring beans. Yeah. You can rinse them and you can quickly cook them on a stove. A little olive oil, some oh. different spices, whatever you prefer. Okay. And you can put them on a salad and you can keep them in the refrigerator for five days. So they're mm -hmm. added plant-based proteins right. if you don't want to every single night make a chicken yes. or a turkey, et cetera. You also have sauce here. So uh -huh. when you're making your pizza on a Wednesday right. night, you have pizza sauce. You right. also have some corn. That can be your added carbohydrate, right? Half a cup, just you can cook that up. You can serve it cold. Corn yeah. is always very delicious. So having these staple items, mm -hmm. it's like a quick meal in effect. Yes, these are so inexpensive too. Totally, 99 cents, really quick and to grab and always have in your pantry. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Okay, and what's over here? This looks like Chinese food. Yes, Chinese food is one of my favorites. Okay. As our rotisserie chickens. Uh huh. Wednesday is my day that I am fatigued of thinking about what to eat. Yeah. And so when I order Chinese food, I always get an extra side of brown rice, mm -hmm. and I get vegetables, and I get sauce on the side. Smart. And so then it's already in the freezer. On Wednesday, I'm gonna get my rotisserie chicken, and mm -hmm. I don't have to think about what is the carbohydrate and what are the vegetables that are gonna be on the side. Right. I already have these, and I also have that sauce because I still want it to taste good. Yeah. I don't want things to be bland because right. that just like makes it not fun and it just leads you ta down a path of like not sticking to your goals. Right. It's just like an easy, flavorful way to get a lot of bang for your buck mm -hmm. and still keep it healthy. Yeah, I love this. And you know, a lot of our members talk about how they're, they're eating healthy during the day, but then it gets to be dinner time and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to eat. And, and I say they actually have decision fatigue. You know, totally. that's a real thing. You make so many decisions throughout the day and then at night you're like, I don't even know. And then I order something unhealthy, that's you right. know? So this is a great way to get around that. That. And, and like you said, making sure that it looks appetizing too yeah. is, is huge. Yeah. So I love this tip. Yeah, good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Vanessa. Thank you. All right. Well, for more meal and recipe inspiration, visit today.com slash start today. Coming up, we've got exercises to strengthen the core. That's just ahead. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? 
whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. I'm going to be guiding you through a simple core routine. And the best part, you don't need any equipment. As we kick off a new year, I want to inspire you to build both physical and mental strength. And I'll show you a few ways to do this throughout the workout. Let's head down to our mats. The first exercise is a basic crunch, but with a twist with the legs up. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. Slowly roll down onto your back, feet as wide as your hips. We're gonna place the hands behind the head. From here, we're gonna bring the knees up to a tabletop position, a 90 degree angle, and we're gonna hug the knees in together to work the inner thighs. Then we're gonna slowly curl up with your head, neck and chest, I want you to feel like you're holding your head up and that there's an egg in between your chin and your chest. And you're holding this egg just enough so that you don't crack it and just enough so that it doesn't roll out. So elbows are wide, chin is off the chest, abs are in, we're curling up for 10. Here we go. Exhale and inhale. Exhale and inhale. Good. Awesome. We're doing 10 repetitions here. Five more. Good. Four, squeeze those inner thighs together. Three, last two, abs in tight. Last one, rest. Now the next exercise is a crisscross, reaching the knees up. So we're gonna hug the knees in, knees are at a 90 degree angle, palms come together at the center of your chest. We're gonna curl up and reach the hands forward, back to center. Curl up, reach to the other side, and center. Abs in tight, good and reach. We squeeze the inner thighs together, trying not to move the legs. Good. Really working the internal and external obliques here. Nice job. Last two. Good. And rest. Awesome. Now next up is the single leg lift with a lower. So what that means is we're going to have the feet on the ground. Keep one foot on the ground as you lift the other leg up. Tilt the pelvis, pull the navel in towards the spine. We're gonna flex the foot here if you want some added footwork. We're gonna lower down, exhale. Inhale, point the toe to come up. Exhale, lower down, reach through the heel. Inhale, coming up. Now, as you're doing this exercise, you could just use your legs, but this is a core routine. So we're really pulling those abdominals in. We're exhaling to lower, keeping the back pressed into the ground. We do not want to arch the spine, so do not do that. Keep the low back pressing gently into the ground because you're pulling that navel in towards your spine so intensely. Good. And inhale up. Good. Two more. Exhale down. Inhale up. Last time. Exhale down. Inhale up and rest. Now we're going to switch to the other side. So foot goes down. Other leg goes up. We tilt the pelvis. Abs in tight. Flex the foot. Exhale. Lower down. Inhale. Come up. Now, not only am I a certified personal trainer, but also a certified Pilates instructor. So if this move seems familiar to all of you that do Pilates, you are correct. So we're moving this leg to make it more challenging for the core to stay engaged. Good. We exhale lower. Good, abs in tight. Inhale up. Nice, exhale, flex and lower. Inhale, point up. And exhale, flex and lower. Inhale up, last time, exhale, flex and lower, and inhale up and rest, great. Next up is the single leg toe touches. So what we mean by that is we're gonna lift both legs up towards the ceiling, we're gonna pull the abs in, curl up, head, neck, and chest comes off the ground. Remember, you're holding that egg between your chin and your chest. We're gonna reach up for one toe, one set of toes, as we lower the other leg down, through center and reach. Good. Reach and reach. Nice. Reach and reach. Nice job. Reach and reach. Last two. And reach. Rest. Awesome. 
All right, for our last core exercise, we're gonna roll on up and we're gonna come onto our knees and go into a modified side plank. Now, this one's a little tricky, so we're gonna take a minute here to set up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be on our knees. Then we're gonna bring one hand down to the ground and extend the other leg out. So notice my fingertips are reaching towards the sides, my knee is in line with my ankle, and my knee is underneath my hip. I fall to the side, this leg is extended. Next, placing my hand behind my head, I keep my elbow out wide. Now, I'm gonna lift this leg up and do a tiny crunch. So we lift, crunch, and lower. Lift, crunch, and lower. This is a tiny movement. Now, if you need help here, you can put your fist on the ground, or if this is too much, you can simply hold this right here for 10 counts, okay? But we're crunching up here. We've got three more. Good, last two, awesome, and rest, and we go on to the other side. So, setting that up again, on the knees, we bring that hand down, fingertips pointing that way. We extend the other leg wide, we open the chest up, hand behind the head, abs in tight, we lift and crunch. Good, lift and crunch, lift and crunch, awesome. Working that side waist right here, good, the waistline, we're whittling the waistline, so to speak, working the core from all angles. This is the side waist. Good and rest. Awesome. Great job. That was your core workout. And remember, we worked it from all angles. We worked the front, the transverse abdominis, the internal and external obliques, and the muscles that wrap around the entire core. Coming up, I'll be answering our viewers' inspiring questions. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to Start Today. No matter where you are on your fitness journey, it's important to stay in the know about ways to stay safe and healthy. Members of our Start Today community shared questions for me today, which I'm so excited to answer. Becky sent in a question. Take a look. I'm really good about scheduling my workouts every morning, but I'm not very good about stretching at all. Would it be better to stretch before or after a workout? Thanks. Well, Becky, since you already have the walking down, I'd recommend that you do what I call habit stacking. So after your walk, then add in a stretch routine. Now, unless your walk is very, very intense and you're going up hills, or if you are exercising and doing something other than walking, you may need to loosen up before. But if you're just going on a casual, leisurely walk, then definitely add on a stretch routine after your walk. Another community member, Trisha, said, I found myself moving more and more each day, but my muscles are so sore from my lower back down to the bottom of my feet. I feel the worst in the mornings, but I'm not sure when I should stretch. I always say that you are the expert of your own body. So if you feel sore in the morning, I'd recommend that you stretch in the morning. Here's a couple easy stretches that you can do once you get up out of bed to help with your back and also to loosen up the backs of the legs, which can help make you feel better down at your feet too. So we're just gonna place the arms up, clasp the hands, round forward, 
and then lift the chest up. Good, so this is a standing version of cat and cow, which is stretching the chest and also stretching the upper back and lower back. So do this five times and then move on to the next stretch. For this stretch, I'm gonna have you step one foot forward, one foot back, flex the front foot, hands on the hips, and slowly lean down. You can hold this stretch for 10 to 20 seconds, keeping those toes flexed, reaching up towards the shins, and feeling a stretch behind the back of the leg, and then making sure that you do that on the other side. Next, Joanne asked, what are five essential stretches or poses that we should do particularly as we get older? Well, as a certified yoga instructor, I love combining hatha and vinyasa yoga, which means we hold stretches and then we flow through stretches. So here are five yoga poses that you can do in a routine to help you feel looser and limber, especially as you're getting older. We're gonna clasp the hands up top and lean over to one side, come through center and over to the other side. So we're moving through this stretch here, opening up the side waist and along the spine. Then after this, we're gonna place the hands on the hips, step one foot forward, one foot back, and stretch the hip flexor. You can also reach the arms out to the side and up if you'd like to make this a little bit more intense. Hold this for 10 seconds, and then we're gonna come through center and switch to the other side. Next, we're gonna open the legs wide and slowly hinge forward at the waist into a forward fold, allowing the arms to hang down and feeling a stretch in the back of the legs in the hamstrings and in the calves. Slowly come up, and next up we're gonna hold one more pose. This is tree pose. Start with your standing foot on the ground for stability. Place the other foot on your ankle, your calf, or somewhere above your knee. This is a great balance pose and strength training pose while also opening up the outer hip. Hold for 10 to 20 seconds, switch sides, and the final pose that I would like for you to do is a standing twist. Loosen up that thoracic spine, the middle of the back, and again, this is a dynamic, a vinyasa-based pose because we are moving, and this will help you to feel more energized throughout the day. Great question. Next up, Diane asked, I began walking in May. I started walking about one mile, and I'm now walking five miles every morning. Should I keep walking longer distances, or should I add weights to my walks? That's a great question. Now, depending on your goal, I would say that you should change it up just a little bit. Five miles daily is a great amount of, of miles to be walking, but it can be a little bit taxing on your body. So I would recommend changing it up and adding in a little bit of Pilates core exercises so that you can walk further faster and get less tired in your in your body in general. And I would also recommend adding in stretching or even some yoga stretches to help loosen up your body after you get those miles in. Now, if you're only walking for stress reduction, if you're happy with your body's physique, happy with how you feel, then by all means, feel free to up those miles. But if you've got other goals in mind, then I would recommend doing that core strength and also the Pilates and yoga stretching. And lastly, Teresa asked, asked, how do I get past the beginner stage in yoga? Well, I have been doing yoga for almost 20 years and I still stay at the beginner stages in a lot of my yoga poses because for me, yoga is about going deeper into the poses and relaxing and finding new edges that you can push. So let me give you an example. If you were to come forward in warrior one with the front knee bent over the ankle and the back foot flat on a diagonal, stretching that hip flexor, a way to intensify this and make this a little bit more advanced is to stay Step that back foot further back. Bend that front knee a little bit more. Pull the abs in, lift the chest, reach the arms up while relaxing the shoulders. And boy, this feels tremendously different than this version of the pose. So I would recommend to try to go deeper in those beginner's poses, but if you really do want to step it up, then focus on doing more planks. Planks are going to build your core and they're going to make it so that it's easier for you to do balance poses. So here's a plank coming down onto the ground and holding this plank position. Shoulders over the wrists, heels are reaching back towards the back of the room, the crown of the head is reaching forward, and the abs are in with the spine in one straight line. This is going to help you with arm balances and other one-legged poses that you can do in yoga that are a little bit more advanced. 
such great questions and what an awesome day. I hope today's show keeps you motivated to keep going. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Stephanie Mansoor and we'll see you next time for Start Today. Do you see this? See this pizza? You wanna eat this pizza? Too bad, I'm going to. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Who doesn't just love ooey, gooey, and totally decadent cheese? I know you do. Americans truly can't get enough. In fact, we've tripled our cheese consumption since the 70s. Today, the average person here eats a whopping 35 pounds of cheese a year. 35! So it's no surprise that cheese is usually one of the toughest things to give up if you're ditching dairy. But I've got some good news for you. These days, there are a lot of tasty options out there when it comes to vegan cheese, and I'm determined to explore them all. Well, maybe not all, but I've discovered a few really, really good ones. I'm checking out a new type of pizza shop serving up killer pies. Then, I'll be using cashews to make an irresistible dairy-free dip of my own. But first, I'm headed to Riverdale, an artisanal cheese shop making its mark on the plant-based cheese world. Michaela Grobe is the owner and cheesemonger of Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop on Manhattan's Lower East Side. It's the only shop in New York City that exclusively features dairy-free artisanal cheeses. Michaela, thank you for having me. I love a plant-based cheese moment. This is very exciting for me. Tell me about what inspired you to start Riverdale. Basically, I love cheese. Um, I love animals. I became vegan for 40 animals, basically, and when I then started looking around for cheese. I found that, you know, it was, it was out there, but you couldn't really access it easily. Michaela's quest for better vegan cheese started a decade ago, when it was still really hard to find dairy-free cheese that was actually good. While working a high-profile job in the corporate world, Michaela saw an opportunity to open a new type of store. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if there would be one place just like any other tea shop where everything's vegan. And that's kind of where the idea came from. She began reading books on vegan cheese making and took classes with acclaimed vegan chefs. On the weekends, Michaela went through a lot of trial and error in her home kitchen, while also crafting a plan to start her own food business. I still had my corporate job and at one point I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to leave the corporate world and really do something about it. I really thought, I want, to, I want to try it. If it, if it fails, it fails, right? But at least I tried it. With enough money saved, she left her job in 2015 and opened Riverdale, named after her two pets, a dog named River and her cat, Fidel. But Michaela's mission to make vegan cheese more accessible wasn't just a passion project. It was a pivotal time for a booming business. In 2017, vegan cheese sales hovered around $294 million. By 2022, that figure is projected to reach nearly 600 million. That's a 100% increase. Are you trying to mimic, you know, dairy cheese, or are you kind of creating something in your own line, in your own world, yeah. um, or are you just trying to replicate the experience of buying cheese? Yeah. It's a little bit of, of everything. It's the experience. It's a product that people know. Uh, that looks like a brie. That looks like a, a gouda. But then there are also other cheeses that have no equivalent in the dairy world. Riverdale's blue cheese uses the same fungus that creates the iconic navy marbling in the dairy version. But the shop's Vitopian is a cashew and soy-based cheese with a unique texture that's semi-firm yet creamy. The way I like to explain our customers is to not look for like for like um, imitation. It's the same as if you would make a a gouda from a cow's milk and from a goat's milk. It has the same techniques, the same cultures, but the end product is very different. So it's the same if your base is a cashew nut. The end product's different, but it's still a cheese. 
in my, my view at least. Who do you want to be eating this cheese? We meet definitely a lot of vegan customers, but we also have people that are vegetarian, um, lactose intolerant. So whereas we do obviously speak to the vegan community, um, for me it was also important that we reach out and connect with the non-vegan community. You're targeting the cheese curious. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I appreciate that it's difficult to make the switch because people are afraid of like, oh my god, what am I going to eat? Michaela has the cheesy answer to that question. In the shop's kitchen, she showed me how to make a few of her handcrafted cheeses. Okay, Michaela, what are we making today? So we're actually making a feta today. It's going to be a very salty and crumbly and firm one, which is perfect for salads. Vegan cheesemongers use a variety of ingredients to mimic the taste and texture of dairy cheese. Common bases include a combo of nuts, vegetable oils, and soy products. So for this one, we're actually using tofu. This tofu has been frozen first, and then we kind of squeeze out all the liquid so it becomes very dry. Michaela uses firm tofu to create a sturdy feta. It allows the cheese to uniformly slice and dice, but also crumble, just like the traditional Greek cheese. For flavor, Michaela adds Himalayan salt, red wine vinegar, garlic powder, and Greek oregano. Then there are two types of fats. So you're using coconut oil here. Why are mm -hmm. you using coconut and not a different kind of oil or fat? Yeah, I mean, coconut oil um, firms up once it's chilled, mm -hmm. so it really helps with just making the cheese firmer. All right, so I've got some olive oil here. Mm -hmm. And it's just olive oil with a little bit of oregano in it, and that's just to get a little bit more flavor. And I'm just using a, like a, a tablespoon or something like that. Okay, so we're ready to blend our feta. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to become friends in here. Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. looking for for it to be done, and how long are we processing for? So we're looking for a very smooth, almost shiny kind of consistency. Even when I think it's done, I usually like to give it another minute or two just to be on the, uh, on the safe side. You can't overblend this. Michaela scrapes down the processor every minute or so to ensure the mixture reaches a smooth, creamy consistency. Then it's transferred into cheese molds. We made two flavors, one plain and one with an olive tapenade center. The cheeses sit in the fridge for two days to firm up. I made some ahead already, oh, really? so we don't have to wait overnight and we can taste them right away. Oh, exciting. So this is what it looks like when you turn it upside down. What? So this is one with the um, tapenade layer, oh. and here is one with uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Wait, this is crazy how firm it is. Yeah. Can we eat them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Will you have some with me? I want to try this one. Yeah, you wait. try that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. So it's nice and salty. Wow, that's crazy. Crumbly, but it doesn't taste anything like the uh, the, the tofu that we use as a base. It feels very light, but still like dense enough to mm -hmm. feel like, oh wow, like I'm eating something that could really stand up to a dairy yeah. cheese. Yeah. This is so delicious. My mind is blown. You have so many different types of cheeses. Can we try some mm. other ones too? Oh, absolutely. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> 
NBC News, streaming free now. At Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop in New York City, owner Michaela Grobe makes two cheeses in-house. She also imports over a dozen varieties from across the country and around the world. I'm genuinely freaking out because this all looks like real cheese. <laughs> like, talk to me about what we're seeing here. So this one is another one of our house-made cheeses. It's, it's, a, it's a blue cheese type and it's aged for about well, two to three months. It's definitely more on the funkier side. The uh, base ingredient here is cashews. Then we have a brie style here. The cultures that are being used for to create this nice fluffy rind mm. is the same as you would use on a dairy application. This one's uh, from Texas and it actually has um, cashews and rice flour. Oh, what kind of cheese is this? So that's a smoky aged cheddar style, very nice and firm and very strong and uh, deep flavor. And here we have one that's made in New York and it's made from macadamia nuts and hemp. Mm. And it has a little bit, little bit of a kick, a little bit of a spice, something like along the lines of a pepper jack. I'm very excited to try them. How are we gonna assemble it? Can we make like a little cute cheese platter or something Oh yeah, like absolutely. We have a few things that will go really nicely with each of those cheeses. Nice. Riverdale also carries many cheese board essentials, including crackers, jams, and vegan charcuterie. Absolutely. I would have a party just to serve this. It was almost time to dive in, but you already know, my camera always eats first. I think I have to start with the pepper jack because yeah, I love you should. spice. Absolutely. So it is a bit spicy. I'm okay. Yeah, especially the I'm, crust is, is gonna be spicy. I'm ready for it. Whoa. Yeah? Once I get started, I just can't stop. Vegan blue with strawberries, anyone? Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. And we had to pair the brie with pear. Michaela, you have changed my world today. This is so <laughs> exciting. Um, Great. And I just can't thank you enough. This is incredible. And I, I hope people really see all the amazing things you're doing with vegan cheese. I'm really happy to have so many more cheese makers. We find so many more cheese makers like every month. There's a new one we start working with. Thank you so much. If you ever need more tasters, I'll be sure to Just call you. like yes. hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> I've saved a little room for my next cheesy stop. A New York pizza shop firing up plant based pies for their screaming fans. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
I live in Brooklyn and there are few foods that scream New York City more than pizza. But is pizza really pizza without cheese? Vegan cheeses may be delicious, but capturing the melty, gooey goodness of mozzarella is tough. And that's obviously essential for a perfect pie. Meet one of my favorite vegan pizza spots, Screamers. Come on. Are you kidding? Is it a joke? It's not a joke, it's vegan. <laughs> Open since 2016, Screamers is similar to many iconic slice spots all over the city. Head chef Joy Strang has worked at Screamers for four years. She developed popular pies on the menu, like the Truffle Scream, a pizza covered in oyster and cremini mushrooms, plant-based parm, arugula, and a drizzle of fragrant truffle oil. Tell me about the inspiration behind Screamers. I mean, the inspiration was literally just that. It was a bunch of vegans sitting around wanting to um, have a really good slice of New York pizza, and thus Screamers was born, you know? What was your background before Screamers? Uh, so I spent a lot of time as a chef for a Mexican restaurant, and I've also worked in American fine dining. But I also find that like, cooking vegan food, you just take the same methods that you use for cooking anything and just apply it to vegan ingredients. Screamers serves all types of pies, from classics like pepperoni and a fully loaded supreme, to mashup flavors, like a Reuben pie topped with spice seitan and Thousand Island dressing. They have two locations in Brooklyn and a dedicated following on social media. How far has somebody traveled to get some Screamers pizza? We get people from all over. Brazil um, is notable, uh, Germany. And I always feel badly for people that are traveling from out of town when they come here because then they eat the pizza and then they have to think about the pizza when they go home. And I'm like, I'm really sorry for <laughs> They you know. ruin people. Yeah. What do you say, Joy, to people who are skeptical of vegan cheese? Because obviously cheese is a huge part of pizza. I'd say, honestly, that's probably our number one challenge is people come in and they're like, oh, I don't know about the cheese, but vegan cheese has come a long way. You know, um, before there weren't as many options, but I think there's so much more focus and emphasis on making things more delicious these days as opposed to just having a alternative. Screamers uses a specific vegan cheese to replicate the texture of dairy cheese. So we use a uh, BioLife mozzarella. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we've tried many, many cheeses, but this seems to be the one with the best smell, the best, best mouth feel, I think. What is it made out of? Coconut oil and potato starch is the base of it. So again, it's very allergy friendly, um, no soy, no nuts. Screamers also makes two cheeses in-house, an almond-based Parmesan and an ultra creamy ricotta. Today we're gonna make our almond ricotta, um, which goes on a lot of our four pizzas. Yay, I'm yeah. excited. Okay, so I see you've soaked the almonds to soften them, but they're also blanched as well. There's no skin on them. So why is that happening there? Yeah, because the skin tends to, one, um, give you like a little bit of a, a different mouthfeel. It's um, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit grainy and also just for color purposes. Okay, should we get started? What are we doing first? So we're gonna put in our um, soaked and blanched almonds into the Robo Poop. All right, and then okay. next we're gonna go with our salt. Lactic acid goes in there next. Why are we using lactic acid here? So it gives it a little bit of a tang, you know, that um, you know every cheese tends to have. We achieve that by putting the lactic acid in there. All right. Yeah. And then this is the blended oil. It's a little bit of vegetable oil and a little bit of um, olive oil. And then we're just gonna snap the lid on here. The mixture blends for a couple minutes. Once everything gets creamy, it's time for a taste. Are we done? Yeah, we're looks done. It's delicious. You want to give it a try? I really would. All right. I thought you never asked. Yeah, for sure. Mmm. Pretty good, right? Very creamy like ricotta. Joy, it feels wrong to have cheese without the pizza. For so sure. what can we put this almond ricotta on top of? Well, we're going to show you one of our most popular pizzas, like we mentioned before, the buffalo cauliflower. Um, yeah, so we'll use the cheese that we just made for that. All right, what are we starting with? So um, this is the, our dough. We make all of our dough in-house. I'd say the most challenging part about making pizza at home is probably stretching the dough, mm -hmm. right? So you want to start by flouring both sides so it doesn't stick. Um, and then we're going to press out all of the air bubbles. And while pressing out the air bubbles, you're kind of like keeping it in this circle shape. So it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to stretch and still be formed into this like perfect, beautiful circle. All right, so now that we've gotten our air bubbles out here, we're gonna flip it over on our hand and start the stretching process. It's like you would literally do this in your sleep. I know, I mean, I probably could, I probably have. All right, so wow. there we are. Did so. you just see that though? That was like in two seconds. 
What is the trick to spreading sauce pr appropriately okay. and well? So you want to, I always start in the middle and then I, I circle out like this and I push, um, push the sauce to the sides. This is like a little bit of like hypnosis going on. <laughs> yeah. So take a big handful of the cheese and I will say, I'm gonna give you a little cheese spreading advice here. Okay. You wanna start high and then just kind of sprinkle it all around so you get an even coat, okay? Okay, all right. You're doing great. Okay, yeah, I was looking for affirmation really quick. <laughs> yes, I, you're doing a great job. Can you see that? The pizza gets a few generous dollops of that luscious ricotta. How does this bake off? Well, it actually gets a little bit crispy on top, which makes it so, so delicious. Okay, what's next? All right, so then we're going to put our uh, buffalo cauliflower on top. Oh. Yeah. Okay, tell me about how you prepare the cauliflower. Okay, for sure. So we make our own buffalo sauce here, and we take, um, we break down cauliflower, and we cook the cauliflower in buffalo sauce. How hot is this oven, and how long are we keeping our pizza in there for? So we keep the oven between 500 and 550, um, and it's going to cook for about six, six, six or seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, so super quick. Quick. Yep, and then it'll be nice, crispy, and uh, golden brown on the edges, and that's how you know it's done. The seven minute wait, it felt like eternity. How's it doing in there? Oh, she, oh. she, she beautiful. All right, let's take <gasps> one more peek at the bottom here. What oh, do you think? I think it looks gorgeous. I think she's What beautiful. do you think? I think, I think she's ready. Joy, I've got to document this process. Okay. It's just simply a part of my brand. Okay, do it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that looks so fire. Are you kidding me? I know, right? The pizza is served up in true New York style. You're not eating off of a paper plate. Are you eating pizza? Are you even eating a Are New York you? pizza? No. Amazing slice job. Boom. Come on. <gasps> what do you think? Stop. So good, right? This tastes like real pizza. Yeah. I don't even want to say real pizza. It just tastes, tastes like, like regular pizza. dairy pizza. Yeah. It's so good. It's so delicious. Yeah. What does it mean to you, Joy, to be creating this traditional New York slice that's vegan, that gives so many more people an option? It's awesome. I mean, when people come to New York, when people think about New York, one of the things they, they think about is pizza. You know, they want to check that box off. Oh, I had a New York pizza. So it's really, really awesome that we've given the option to every single person to be able to do that, you know? You know what I also really like uh, to hear is um, people who have dairy allergies or even parents with their children that have dairy allergies and they are always so happy that we exist because otherwise they wouldn't be able to have pizza and like a, such a big part of a kid like childhood is eating pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of like uh, little kids pizza parties and stuff like that, Ew. you know, it's so <laughs> cute. And so, you know, it's like that little bit of normalcy. It's like, oh, I can't have dairy, but still have really good pizza. What are some of your favorite reactions from vegans and non-vegans alike who try your pizza for the first time? Like a non-vegan reaction, they are like, oh, it's actually good. And you're like, I told you so. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of people that come in and this is their favorite pizza spot and they are not vegan. If you can't travel to Brooklyn for a screamer's pie, don't worry. I've got your dairy-free cheese cravings covered. Up next, I'm making my super creamy cashew queso. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe.
One of my favorite things to make when I'm having friends over, if I want a really delicious snack by myself, is my roasted jalapeno queso. You might be wondering, a plant-based version of queso? Are you okay, Sama? But to that I say, I'm perfect. Chile con queso is a Tex-Mex classic that's traditionally made with a great melting cheese and green chilies. We're using cashews as the base and nutritional yeast for a cheesy, savory flavor. And jalapeno, I can't forget about our spice. It's super creamy and cheesy. You won't even miss the dairy. Because I like a little spice in everything that I do, we're adding jalapeno to our queso. I like roasting the jalapeno to get that really smoky, delicious flavor. You've got your jalapeno, drizzle it generously with some olive oil. I like to just rub the jalapeno in the oil just to get it nicely coated. All right, say goodbye to our jalapeno. It's about to get roasted. See you later. The jalapenos roast at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes until lightly charred. Look at our jalapeno. She's cooled. It's blackened on the outside. Also, you'll notice that when you let the jalapeno cool, it's gonna get a little wrinkly. That's totally fine. My secret weapon in creating a really delicious and creamy queso, cashews. I soak them either overnight or flash soak them for an hour in hot water. This allows the cashews to expand. They really get nice and pliable and soft. The first thing I'm gonna do is drain my cashews. Now I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Cashews are in. Now I'm just gonna add two cloves of garlic. You might be wondering how I'm gonna make this queso cheesy without the cheese, and to that I say nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is one of my secret weapons in my plant-based repertoire. It's really amazing for creating a savory and cheesy taste to everything you add it to. Beautiful. This is such a super simple recipe, it's actually crazy. Everything's going into a blender. We're gonna add some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And don't forget, our gorgeous jalapeno. Now to help everything come together, I'm just adding a little bit of vegetable broth. You could use water, I just like using veggie broth because it adds some more taste, some more flavor, and we love more flavor when we're cooking, right? Beautiful. Now we get to blend. Are you excited? I'm excited. All right, let's blend. All right, let's check the texture. <gasps> Creamy, velvety, queso-y, not a word, but I have my own dictionary. I don't know if you knew that. It's beautiful. My chips have arrived. I'm ready to plate my queso and I'm very excited about it because then I get to eat it. And that's what we're all here for. Check out this texture, okay? <gasps> Are you checking it out? You sure? Creamy, cheesy, but no cream or cheese, crazy. All right, I want this to look really cute, so I'm just gonna smooth the top out, the back of my spoon, like so. A very simple garnish, just a little bit of pepper. Could you believe it could be that easy? Cheesy, delicious, creamy queso, no dairy involved. Now I get to eat it. Here I go. Chip ready to take a dip. <gasps> Do you see that? Wow. Ooh, that heat is so good. Mm. This is in my cookbook, so I've obviously made this a bunch of times, but it's so good every time. Queso is perfect to share, so luckily I have my whole crew here. So guys, I don't know what you're doing. Get in here. Come on. That's more like it. <laughs> Teamwork, awesome. Love that for us. I hope this showed you can make really creamy, delicious, and cheesy recipes without the dairy. It's amazing. You have to try it. Not to be cheesy, or to be cheesy, I hope this inspired you to try cheese without the dairy because it is just as delicious and versatile.
Good Monday morning. New details coming to light in that deadly.